Exploring Ancient Montana with Brandon Ricks, also known as History Shift. You are listening to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. This is Brothers of the Serpent Podcast, and we are coming to you not live from the 10 by 10 by 10 Tangent Cube of Science. Nestled amongst the dusty bones of an ancient seabed high atop the Ebers Plateau. Sorry this episode is late. It's not my fault. Mine. <laughs> so what happened? What were you doing? I had a, a business trip. Business trip? <laughs> yeah, I went to the Hill Country Wine Symposium. Mm. Schmoozed it up with a bunch of winemakers and other vendors and stuff in the industry. Schmoozing. And uh, yeah, it was it was cool. But was it educational? Were you there yeah, to learn yeah, stuff? Yeah, there was like panels, panels, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, I made some made some cool connections and met some of the people that I've been dealing with on the phone for mm. long time. Yeah, and uh, I went two years ago as well. Oh, but okay, they didn't have one last year, right? Because of COVID. Um, so yeah, it was cool. And uh, I just forgot that it was this week. Like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. And then, you know, Monday morning, I get up, I put all my work clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, ready to leave, and I get a call from... The boss's wife. Yeah, and she's she's like, so are you, are you already on your way to the symposium? And I was like, oh, <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm not going to be leaving for a few hours because I have to do laundry. <laughs> so, so did you go, did you come home every night or did you just stay? No, out there? I stayed there. It was in it was it was like two hours away. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, um, I was wondering. I was not not aware of what what was happening. <laughs> so yeah, I I had completely forgotten about it, and then um, so I had to cancel Cosmographia and our show. Yeah, and so I was like, ah. Oh. And then tomorrow I'm going to the studio to uh, keep working on the album, mix down, and um, yeah, so we've started, we've, uh, the crew started pruning the grapes already, we got all the pre-pruning, well, a lot of the pre-pruning done on the old vines. Uh, I haven't done any of it. <laughs> Me either. I've yeah. been labeling We're, and... Working on bottles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to I've been trying to order everything for 2022 wines because <clears throat> the supply chain issues are so bad that it's like nobody can find anything. So right. I've like placed a bunch of orders and and I, I still have to order barrels. But I talked to my barrel rep over the weekend and he was like, and, and then I, you know, they basically gave me like as if as long as you can get your order in before this date, yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, that's the. I guess that's the combination ag update and rock and roll update. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be uh, going back to the studio this weekend, maybe do a live stream. Cool. We'll get some more live stream. I took a bunch of non live stream video uh, last week. Some of it's good stuff, but I got to take the time to put it together. So um, I'm going to do yeah. another live stream this weekend. So, so far we've had to, we had to go back and redo one song. So we made, made a, some kind of mistake. Um, there was like some distortion. And it was on one track, and it took us forever to find it. Yeah. We we, re, we took all these photos of the board, because you can't do recall on the board uh, automatically. So once we got our mix, we photographed everything on the board and in the patch bay and in the, uh, you know, we've got the all the outboard gear labeled with tape, so we, you know, with, with uh, masking tape, so we know what's running to what. So I had all those photographs, and then we um, moved on to the next song. And then went home later after the weekend was over and listened to the previous one and realized, you know, I was just like, dude, this is, it's distorted. Mm -hmm. There's like some bad distortion in these parts. So when we finished the song we had changed to, and we, we went back and reset the board to the previous one that we had messed up. It took a couple hours <laughs> to get everything back the way it was. I mean, yeah. maybe not that long to reset the board, but then we had to find the problem. Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> and uh, in the process of that, we, you know, we continued to make improvements and it, it, 
the mix didn't come out exactly the same, but it was really good. Mm. Um, so, but that took up the, the time it would have taken to do a song. No, oh, yeah. And this okay. is something that I assumed was going to happen since we are learning. Yeah. Um, so we learned a couple of things like don't go home without, or don't change the board without going home and spending some time listening on other systems to the mix and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Cause okay. you know, we kind of give it a, we would give it multiple listens in the studio and we're like, yeah, it's great. Move yeah. on. So we're, we won't be doing that anymore. So you, does that mean you have to do one song a weekend? One song a day. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Right. So we finish. We we do a song. We we get our mixes out, and it takes it takes a good part of the day to 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 mix that song. Yeah. And then we 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 all go home. Everybody listens to it in their car stereos, and and from in my case, the home stereo because I don't really have a good system in my truck or a way to even. Yeah. Anyway. Um, listen to it in the headphones, listen to it in the system in the house and, uh, you know, take some notes, come back the next morning, do the tweaks, roll it off again, and then we move to the next song. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little less than a song a day, most likely. Yeah. On average. No, that's not bad. And that's what we plan for, 12 days, but then probably we'll we'll do some extra days at the end if, you know, we, we're listening to the whole project once we're done, and it's like, yeah. well, these songs just don't really match up to the quality of the others, the okay. rest of them, so yeah, we're yeah. going to probably go back in and remix those. Yeah. We have all the photos, so we can recall it and just kind of boost the low end or whatever it is we didn't get. Yeah. <clears throat> but otherwise, I'm really happy with, with what's what we've been getting out of there, so... All right. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's tackle some Space Weather news. From spaceweather.com, a couple stories here. Big solar flare. Sunspot AR2929 erupted again on January 20th, producing a powerful M5.5 class solar flare. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded the extreme ultraviolet flash. During the flare, a pulse of X-rays ionized the top of Earth's atmosphere, causing a shortwave radio blackout around the Indian Ocean. Aviators, mar uh, mariners, and ham radio operators in the area may have noticed unusual propagation effects at frequencies below 30 megahertz. Of greater interest is the radiation storm. The flare accelerated a blizzard of energetic particles towards Earth. Uh, the radiation storm was relatively minor. No satellites were harmed. However, many of the particles were funneled into Earth's polar regions by our planet's magnetic field, causing a sustained shortwave radio blackout around the Arctic and especially the Antarctic circles. Uh, and also, the geomagnetic forecast, unrest is possible on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of January as a series of CMEs delivers glancing blows to Earth's magnetic fields. Two of the CMEs were hurled, hurled into space by M-class flares from departing sunspot AR-2929, and a third CME just left sunspot AR-2933. None of the storm clouds will land a direct hit, but their combined effect could spark minor G1-class geomagnetic storms. Hmm. So yeah, this is new solar cycle's ramping up, I think. Col uh, current conditions, solar wind speed is 449.8 kilometers per second. Density is 4.7 protons per cubic centimeter. Sunspot number is 60. Uh, the neutron count is 8.4% above the space age average, and the KP index is at 1, which is very low, quiet, uh, for both now and the 24-hour max. So there you go, your space weather news. Cool, cool. Did you want to mention the, um, the <clears throat> what is it, Tonto, Tondo, Tongo earthquake thing? Oh, Tonga. Tonga. Yeah, so I followed that. Um, I guess I, I don't know, I found out about it maybe 10 hours after the explosion. Yeah. Um, and this was when, I and I, you know, I haven't looked recently, but uh, it sent shockwaves around the planet. I actually am pretty sure our new weather system out at the vineyard. If there was a little spike. There was a blip in it, in the in the pressure sensor. And I, and I only checked that because I saw posts from people around the world, you know, from... People in the UK, people in Australia, people in New Zealand, obviously, and those people's spikes were much larger because they're closer. But, you know, there were people in Canada that picked it up. And, of course, Hawaii and, you know, people, other people on the West Coast. And I was like, I wonder if uh, 
if we got it because it the shockwave the the air shockwave did go around the whole planet so yeah there was a blip right around the the correct time uh for when the shockwave would have been passing over us here in texas uh but yeah it it was a i think the last i saw geologists and volcanologists were saying it may have been the most powerful volcanic explosion in the last 30 years if not more um an extremely violent detonation that uh it was partially underwater uh so the plume threw a whole you know threw a, a lot of vaporized water up into the air and i don't know it was just a, it was a fascinating thing there are excellent satellite satellite images and you know uh like time video. lapses and yeah. video time lapses time lapses some great modeling for the tsunamis that got sent out oh is that what that was that yeah. you sent me that was the tsunami yeah that was from a wow a, yeah, that's from a seismologist and geologist team, and here's like here's our early modeling of the tsunamis, wow. and you can just see that splat, you know, this, yeah, this, these these the ripple. ripples going out. Yeah, that was that was the tsunami modeling. That was so cool, and then yeah. and then you can see it reflecting off the coasts yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and, hitting yeah. hitting undersea mounts and all kind and bouncing. <sighs> so yeah, cool. really cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, obviously this is we're excited about the science, but there's you know people yes were harmed in the in from the um, from the tsunamis and stuff like that, of course, that's terrible. And the ash fall. You know, and I think that the that the Tonga or whatever, yeah. like it's been dark. Like that, we haven't heard anything. That's uh, what I'm saying. I haven't checked days. recently, but yeah, they're they're they're. I was people were showing like maybe 24 hours after it took place, somebody put up a um, somebody put up a data map, like a you know like just the showing network data from the island, and it just bam, just all of it disappears oh, to zero. Man. Right after the eruption, their their electric lines were cut. You know they don't have fresh water. Like so, you know if you're interested in helping, there people have already started up GoFundmes. There are charities, oh, that's great. Um, and they started up almost immediately because yeah, they the I think you know I, I there was a tsunami. You know none of them were very big. I mean three meters yeah. maybe. That's ten feet. That's a that's a big. That's a lot of water. Uh, and when your island, the highest point on your island is twenty seven feet, you got a problem. If yeah. You got a ten foot wave rolling at you, yeah. But then there's the ash fall, right? So, and then they lost electricity and everything like that. So, what they're what I saw was they're saying we need fresh water, you know. There's and they need, uh, so I guess bottled water. They need to uh, they need medical supplies and everything like that. I don't know if they've come back online, but yeah, back when I was looking at it a couple of days ago, very little communication. And then <clears throat> people were saying, well, we need to send planes in there to look, but the plume is so enormous. And it's so dangerous to fly near that kind of stuff with a jet <clears throat> that, you know, you can, you, you know, it can destroy your plane. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> on the one hand, it was a sort of a terrifying example of what nature can do. And on the other hand, it was very interesting scientifically. But yeah, there is a human cost, of course. It's yeah. People are posting also the quote. Uh, who was it that said it? You know, we live. Oh, it, yeah. Randall quotes it. Yeah. We live at, you know, at the, a, uh, <laughs> how does it go? <laughs> I just drew a blank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically I mean, the point is that we live at the mercy of geological forces. Yeah. And it could change at any moment. That's right. Without notice. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it was an interesting thing to follow. And of course, um, you know, I hope everything is okay there near and, you know, near the, on the island. I mean, I just don't know. The last I looked, it was still What's dark. What's interesting is you imagine uh, 50 years ago, there would hardly have been, you know, like now we can look and see that their network has just, their yeah. network activity has just gone, you know. Stopped, yeah. I mean, you think about something like this happening <clears throat> 200 years ago. Yeah. And nobody, you know, people would know about tsunamis, but it would be difficult to even... Yeah, have any idea. And if you're in Australia, just randomly, just a large wave shows up. You have no idea why. Hey, it would be upside down, too. It would be <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Well, I think it's right side up because Tonga's also on that side oh, of the planet. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it was upside down when it showed up up here in the northern hemisphere because it started out down there. <laughs> right side up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> But yeah, Brad was saying, well, we, I told him, you know, I was like, dude, I think this thing sent tsunamis around the world. Like there were tsunami warnings all around the Pacific coastlines. And he looked at it and he was like, well, the, the, the wave that hit, you know, 
the west coast of the U.S. is only three feet. And I'm like, yeah, after it traveled like, what, 10,000 miles, you're complaining that it's only three feet high? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was a... It was a fascinating display of nature's power. Yeah. And there were some good videos of the previous detonate. Like, the thing had gone off. And I don't know the timelines here exactly, but there were boats that were circling far away from it because <clears throat> it was it had been smoking for months. Mm. And then it, it kind of blew up a little bit, you know, and it was, I mean, it was not a little bit. It was a huge explosion. And there was videos of that. But the main one that happened, I haven't seen any video of that. I don't think, I'm not sure if anybody got the that huge one. But yeah, camera might have been destroyed in the shockwave. <laughs> right. Yeah, there were I also watched videos of people in Fiji, which is 8 or 900 kilometers away from the explosion. You know, and they knew it was coming. They were popping, you could hear and they're just standing on the shoreline and you hear these popping noises in the sky. You know, wow. these it's like it sounds yeah, like fireworks like going the off artillery. and then a huge one goes you know and rattles everything and some of them fall down and they all start running man <laughs> yeah and like on the grand scheme of things this is small oh yeah very very you small know? yeah 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 yep so anyway i thought we should mention that since it is yeah thanks uh, for timely. reminding me yeah thanks for reminding yeah russ me about was that. russ was keeping me updated i was in the studio not paying attention to anything bothering no one <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I started getting, uh, but thank you for sending me that stuff. Cause that, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was, you know, I was, and what Brad also said was he was like, is this hinting at things to come? Cause this is a, this is a, uh, what is it called? The, the ring of fire. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. And I thought too, I mean, you know, when you see something that, that big, you think like, well, that had to do something. To yeah. fault lines and things that are on on edge. Yeah. You know, I mean, it rattled everything, gave it a nice jolt. Yep. And um, so, yeah, if there's any other stresses that are just on the brink there, it can just right. give it that little gives nudge. It that little nudge. Yep. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But well, if, yeah. Go ahead. Well, this week we uh, we invite. So last week we had on friend of the show Josh Smart. Uh, that was a great episode, and he was showing his. Uh, you know, his field work, his basically his, his ex explorations into the uh, interesting and mysterious stone structures of the northeast of the U.S. Uh, and, you know, in part, I think some of the, his explorations were inspired by, by this podcast. And then he's joined our Discord, joined our community, and he's been posting his research. So getting him on the show was great. And we're doing the same thing this week with longtime friend of the show, Brandon Ricks which uh, you all should be familiar with as History Shift. We mention him at the end of just about every episode because he makes all of our YouTube videos. He's been working with us for a long time. So Brandon has been doing a similar thing in Montana, where he lives. Uh, he's been exploring uh, an area up there that has a lot of very interesting rock formations, some of them which, some of them which look very suspiciously like, suspiciously like they may have been man-made, possibly. You know, the natural explanation is... What, what you kind of fall back on for most of these, but some of them are very interesting and strange. So that's what this episode is about. Hope you guys enjoy it. If there is a video version, which was made by History Ship, so you guys should check it out uh, because he does show us a lot of pictures and videos. So here you go. Here's our in uh, interview with Brandon Ricks. Hope you guys enjoy it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Brothers of the Serpent Podcast, and we are very glad to welcome History Shift slash Brandon Ricks <laughs> to the podcast for the first time. Um, he has made all of the YouTube videos for That's this right. podcast and offered to do that way early on. <laughs> and uh, he's been working in perpetuity for free. Yeah, forever for free. <laughs> and uh, we also had the chance to meet each other. We went to a, 
a um, like a convention in Arkansas. Randall was speaking there, and uh, you came with us, and we mm -hmm. we got to hang out hang out with Randall and go look for crystals and do a bunch of cool <laughs> stuff there. That was a lot of fun. Yep. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. It's great to finally be here. Episode yeah. 56 is when I started. Oh, so man. it's been 220 episodes. Yeah. yeah and you, I remember you went, you like went back through the whole yep. back catalog and <laughs> turned those all into videos for us too. That was, yep. Fun. And I've still got every single one of them. Wow. I was like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on a big hard drive. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Backups yeah. upon backups. Backups or backups. Exactly. That's right. Yep. Yeah, anyway, you know, people will be familiar because we mentioned him at the end of every show. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is the guy. So the other thing that happened, let's see, it was like you said, around episode 56 or something, and you mm -hmm. What happened? How did we get in touch with each other first? You made an Atlantis video. Is that what it was? Is yeah. Is that how we first saw each other? Yeah, that was originally what we started with was the recap was not at Atlantis. Yeah. And I had you do the voiceover. That's oh, right. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I volunteered. Uh, you did. I, I, you, were, you were talking about it and I was like, dude, this is cool, but you need like just do the narration because you were using a computer voice or something or maybe you just had the text. I can't remember. Now. And you were like, well... I don't want to do it. And I was like, well, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the nice radio voice. So, yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. And I also, <laughs> we have the equipment. So, yes. yeah. So I sent you, you sent me the text. I read it. And then you made the video. And at the time, we didn't even have a YouTube channel for the podcast. Nope. And, I, and I was like, well, you know, we have this podcast. Do you think we should put it on YouTube or whatever? And you were like, uh, yeah. No, I think it was more like me begging you relentlessly. Can I put it on YouTube every week? And you're going, no, I don't want to be on YouTube. No, I don't want to. No, no, no. I don't want to be happened? on YouTube. Stop that asking. That sounds like, yeah. That and then I eventually like... got you to say yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that is more like, maybe I've, I've, I've whitewashed that memory. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but yeah, he no, has, there was some so pleading since, and begging. Yeah, so since then he's put every episode on YouTube, and we haven't had to do any of that work, and it's it's fantastic. So uh, and we've got what like four thousand people. I mean, followers now, so that's great. There's six thousand six thousand subscribers yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, which is wow. yeah, this is a, which is fantastic. We never. You know, promoting. I know I flipped out six thousand viewers number. of a logo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there is way more than clip and cut and paste, Kyle. I'm tired of hearing that shit. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and so, I have to but, type and cut and paste. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that happened right around that time, mm -hmm. if and again, maybe I've corrupted this memory in my own mind, but <laughs> you asked me because of something I said on the show, you were like, Hey, I live in this area. Is there anything cool? You know, to go look, because exactly. I've told people on the podcast, I'm like, I, I have this like database of weird stuff all over the world. So if, you know, if anybody's interested in looking for weird stuff, like tell me where you live and I can tell you what I've got this in that area. And that's exactly what happened. You'd set it on there. And I and my wife had said like two weeks before, find a hobby. And then like <laughs> Russ is like, dun, I have this dun, database. Dun. I'm like, hmm, OK. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you uh, asked yeah, me and I, I, was like, yeah. I was like, there's this like garden of the gods thing it's over there and you were like holy crap it's like in my backyard and it was yeah. literally i like 20 miles away it blew my mind what i found i mean it was just crazy yeah so tell um, yeah, tell yeah. the story you, the you, genesis of that like mm, how you yeah. got into it like you started looking into it, like let tell everybody how that that worked out because this is a really yeah. i think it's a really interesting story yeah no and i i think so too because it's changed my life i mean yeah a lot. So yeah, you told me about, um, uh, give me a website is how it started. Yeah. It was Montana makeless.com. Yeah. Uh, it's run by Julie Ryder. And so I checked it out, man, blew my mind. I'm like, this stuff's here. It looks amazing. I've seen stuff like that in Ireland and all over, you know, makeolithic sites that looked very familiar, but she had some other stuff on her site that was a little more less convincing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, I want scientific stuff. You know, I need some backing of science to say, okay, yep. Somebody built this versus it just formed naturally. Right. But she goes into the aliens and then uh, we were giants and then we were little people and then we were normal sized, and then we were little people again. <laughs> and anyways, I gave her a call after looking at her website and interested in one of her tours. Spent a two hour phone call with her. 
Very interesting. <laughs> she would not let anybody on her tours with a GPS. You could uh, not go with a camera that had a GPS. Uh, you had to sign a waiver that said you would not release the location of the sites to anyone before you could ever go on the uh, tours. So these are all on public land, national forest. So I kind of had an issue with that. <laughs> but she's like making she's, people sign an NDA? Like, yeah, wow. exactly. Yep. That she will sue you if you release the location of these oh sites gosh. to anyone. Crazy. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll figure out where these things are. All right. So basically um, I had talked to um, the forest service. I said, Hey, I'm looking for these things called dolmens. <laughs> I I've heard that they're somewhere in the forest. And can you point me in the direction? And oddly enough, he did. He gave me three sites, um, which I went out and checked out. Um, and the first one was the first dolmen I found. Uh, my dad and I just went for a drive in the winter down North Whitetail Road, which we'll talk about later. And out the window, we saw the first Dolman and I went, oh, shit. And <laughs> we slammed on the brakes and the truck went sideways. <laughs> and we got out and trugged through the snow to it. And that's how we found Fred's house. And that was the first Dolman we ever found. Um, and ever since then, we've, I have and my friends have worked with the Forest Service um, because the tours that she was providing she did not have a license for a guide license and yeah. they were trying to stop her and there was only so much they could do and so we offered to help and the way of helping is when we're out hiking if we find her with a group of people we just tell them yeah about it basically and so we helped and it did stop her illegal to guiding tours so I feel pretty good about that, actually, yeah. <laughs> because we, you know, it, it's public land. It's national forest. If you're going to use it, you need to pay the rights, the li licensing, whatever it is to use it so it, they can maintain it for everybody else. Um, the other big issue I had with it was her saying that she discovered these dolmens. So they're hers and you can use them um, without her permission yeah. or she's going to sue you. She also claimed that Graham Hancock had called her and she turned down him. She turned down Joe Rogan. She'd um, oh, yeah. all these, she had all these claims and stuff. And anyways, but she's out of the picture. Now we, we dubbed her CRL crazy rock lady. <laughs> so whenever we talk about her, we just call her Carl. Now <laughs> I saw Carl down at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> well, yeah. And the other problem but, is she was charging people. Right. Yes. Uh, in in addition yeah. to making them sign NDAs and not allow not you know trying to hide the location of these spots and then also you know taking people out there and giving them her spiel about Atlantis and giants. Oh and, yeah. You know, which I'm fine with talking about Atlantis and giants and little people and stuff, <laughs> but it's it, you know you can't. She's trying to pretend that she has the answer to what these things are, and she's also trying to hide it from people. So another thing that you were doing is you were like, I'm going to build a database or a website that has all the precise locations. So anyone can go find this stuff whenever they want. Yep. And that's what, what I've done. And, um, it's on, on both my websites. It's a Google earth file. Anybody can download it. Um, it lists a whole bunch of locations. I have many more to add, of course. Yeah. Um, it's always growing. Um, but I have helped a lot of people through email, uh, find locations. I've taken a couple of people just out hiking. You know, yeah. you want to go for a hike? Sure, I'll take you up there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Joe from Discord, uh, from the Snake Force. You know, That's he right. came on. Yep. We had a nice meetup. Yep. Took him out to Giants Playground. He had a blast. He thought it was crazy. He's a forestry major. And, you know, he... Some of the stuff he definitely was like, oh, yeah, that's that's geological. I can kind of tell that some of the stuff he's like, I don't get that. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. <laughs> you know? Like, I've seen your pictures and you're like, yeah, OK, I mean, I can be a natural for me. And you're like, well, but I don't know about that one. You and know? that's the thing. You yeah. know, I, I, I keep searching and searching for proof. I want any kind of proof, you know. Yeah. Did they blight fires to crack the blocks, to tip them over? Are there chisel marks anywhere? Do we find any petroglyphs? Do we find any artifacts? Do we find any logical use for the structure? You know, these are the things we ask when we find these things, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like the what you talked about last time, um, you know, your uh, colonial root cellars. Right, with Josh. Yeah. <laughs> it has to have a purpose, you know, and what is that purpose? You know, that that helps explain it's you why it's there, I guess. Yeah, say. absolutely. Well, and the, yeah. the other thing is 
okay, so what what you know what was this area during the Younger Dryas and before? Like, was it underwater? Was it under ice? Was it just below the ice line? What we it was just below the ice line. Okay. Um, this area though goes quite a bit farther back. Um, younger Dryas wise, yeah, we're right at the ice line. Um, there's a Clovis site, of course, we found here right here in Montana. That's probably a hundred miles from where we're looking. Uh, uh, that was the Anzic child. Oh, where they found the 103 artifacts with it. That's yep. right. Anzic was there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then they've got it at Cooper's Ferry too now, um, over in Idaho. So we got two Clovis really close together, which is nice. Right, but, but, it's, but the um, Anzic one is maybe the Anzic Clovis. one was the child. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What? Maybe a Clovis. That's maybe what they call it. Yeah. It's you know, it doesn't. I don't know. Really I've seen really fit the timeline. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen the artifacts. Well, yeah, the artifacts. Yeah, the artifacts are. But the body didn't. You can't really necessarily <laughs> say they're contemporary with the. Uh, yeah. If yeah. you if you I mean not to split hairs but if you look no, at the, okay. the carbon dating of the skeleton or I think was it was it the skeleton or was it the ochre or so, I don't remember what it was. It's, well, they reinterred the like bones. Three, I don't know if they carbon dated them. Yeah, it's like I think it's like three hundred years after. The Clovis mm. period. So it was just like art of like memorabilia handed down generation to generation but and be. they buried it, it with was that buried child with for some reason. It was buried yeah. with artifacts, but they didn't actually find the burial in C2 and the artifacts in C2 because it was dug with machines. Right. They dug out with machines. And then they, the, uh, the, the materials were piled up. And so in with the bones were these Clovis artifacts. So now you could have had a later burial in a Clovis so, on a top site, of a Clovis settlement. Yeah. In a site that had Clovis yep. artifacts in it. So they dig a hole and put the body in there, but there's artifacts no, with, with it. So it it's is extremely possible. It's controversial. Yeah. You got to have that stratification. What's older, what's newer. And they didn't have that because it, right, it they been, dug it up and put it in a pile. Just like construction people dug it up. Yeah. Yeah. So going back no, to I can you, see that. you were referring no, to okay. these structures and things that you're finding out there as dolmens that's mm -hmm. kind of a joke between us right we like we call them <laughs> dolmens but a dolmen in in the sense of the you know the, the long barrows and other things you find in the uk and, in, and elsewhere right. in europe is or in korea uh right we're not saying we're that's what that these are a little bit yeah no absolutely yeah. not in fact then we'll look at the differences between what korea for yeah. example with the whole dolmens yeah uh the hole in the portal. Um, and we're going to look at, of course, the UK. The UK is just stock full of cromlicks and yes. um, everything you can imagine over there. And no, we don't see that. Right. In what? So I always say this: ninety-nine percent of what I see is natural. One yeah. percent I can't explain. So I leave it at that. I until I can explain it. Yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. And the other so, thing is, is you've looked into, you've tried to look into the geology of the area. The reason I was asking about last ice age, yeah. younger dry ice, where's the placement is because, you know, if it was, if this area had been below the ice sheet, then it would seem like some of it must have been constructed after the ice was gone. Cause the ice should have just flattened all that stuff. Right. But if it's actually, right. if it's actually south of the, of the, of the Southern end of the ice sheet, then it could have survived the ice age. It wouldn't have been ground to nothing by the ice age. So it makes no. sense that it could be mil a million year old structure or a million, you know, millions of years old geological formation. Well, and that's exactly right. So it sits the batholith itself. Well, it, I'll talk about that, but it sits within the Elkhorn mountains and it's 75 million years old. Yeah. So these rocks have been on the surface for 75 million years. So they've seen, uh, Many ice ages, right? You know, yeah. Thousands of earthquakes, thousands of pole shifts, you know, whatever. Yeah, and they've seen it. They've been through it. it and I think, if anything, the Younger Dryas, the end of the Younger Dryas, and the flooding, because this is right outside of Camas Prairie. Mm. Okay, so it's right right on the outside. This is the mountain range that Camas Prairie runs through. Um. Um. So th it's had. You know, like I said, 75 million years to move, but the flooding could have affected the rocks. So oh, yeah. the flooding could have pushed a rock out. It could have moved a rock over. It could have created some of these, it could have pushed one down, you know? Is it, yeah. I'll show you a bunch that are just sitting like this far on the edge, big old monoliths. I mean, like for me, ball back blocks, but yeah. they're this far from the edge. One good earthquake, new dolmen. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, they're just like that. It's crazy.
So, but yeah, this is a very old site. So they did an archaeological study in this area, in the Bathlith. They went down to where the riverbed was. They went down to 9,000 BC. That's how far back they got. Um, before they stopped, they ran out of archaeological material. So we have occupation in this area back to 9,000 BC. When did they do this? They did this right, so two years ago, right before they started the road construction back in there, which was just last year. So they got so they had to do a dig for before they could build the road. Oh uh, yeah. So they got yeah. down to eleven thousand years and then stopped. Yep. Yeah. Well, they hit a riverbed of the the boulders and cobble, and that's when they hit stop. They decided there was no there was no, no more, more cultural material below that I, I, know, I asked. <laughs> no, I I went to this presentation where the lead archaeologist put on the slides. I'm like, did you go any deeper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you find any? Clothes? There's nothing down there. <laughs> That's right. Like, dig deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Just another foot. Come on. I don't know. You know how rivers shift so fast. I mean, it would only take a couple hundred years, and a river could completely move in that area. So, Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, that seems your, silly, your but dog, they were just doing it. Is test. your dog oh, wanting I'm some tea? I'm sorry. He's wanting some tea? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Wanting some what? Is that tea you were drinking or is that, is that coffee? Oh no, drinking? just water. Oh, okay. Just water. Yeah. Dog just wants some water. I can tell. No. Oh. Wants some water. <laughs> dog wants attention <laughs> endlessly. <laughs> sorry. It's fine. Push her down, down you beast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. We have dogs on our podcast all the time. Hi, dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? Uh, this is Penny. Penny. Hello, Penny. <laughs> She's a Vizela. <laughs> Look at uh, her. Here. Say Penny. Hey, Hi. Bubbers. There <laughs> oh, there's Penny. Yes. Oh, yes. I know we're saying your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, all she right, bit so me the other night. What time we, <laughs> ah, what time we got? We got, We can get into the anyway, slide sorry. show. No, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, go ahead and get okay. into it. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's, let's take a look at some of your material, man. All right. Some, some of this is this first one's just for fun. So, okay. Cool. <laughs> In all fairness. Oh, hang on a second. Might help if I share my screen first. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I see you have a story poll in the background. Are you doing some surveying? Ah, yes. I was going to talk about that. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. We got, we got permission. So we'll talk. Cool. About that. Okay. Where, here we go. So I just threw this together in a PowerPoint the other day. And obviously I did not do the timing very well. <laughs> Hiking with history shift, exploring Montana's megaliths. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're going to have to speed that up. <laughs> but there's a part I want to get to in here. So yeah, no problem. Just talk people through it. Yep. So first thing we're going to see is probably four of the most interesting and 1% dolmens that I run into. Tizer, the tripod, the goddess, the evergreen. And this is Fred's house over here on the uh, far right. Fred's house. How did it get that name? So that, <laughs> my dad gave it that name. Okay. <laughs> Who is Fred? I, we, we, Fred Flintstone. Ah, ah. ah of course. Okay. <laughs> we stopped and he looked up at it. He goes, oh, it looks like Fred Flintstone's house. <laughs> That's so, perfect. Right? That's perfect. It's Fred's house. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't have to read all this because we've talked about it, but just the structures that we're looking at uh, is all, all concentrated in the Boulder Batholith area, which runs basically from Helena to, and to Butte here in Montana. Um, talk about the geology, of course, already, so we don't have to talk about that too much. But it is what keeps me exploring. Yep, absolutely. This is the Boulder Batholith. Um so I'm just going to read the first part of this. Uh, the Boulder Bathlith is a relatively small bathlith, which is uh, southwest Montana. Exposes the surface is granite, uh, more specifically quartz, monzonite. So this granite is very full of quartz crystals, very easy to see. Um, serving for the host rock, rich mineralized deposits at Butte. That's why Butte exists. It's because the bathlith brought all the copper to the surface. 
Uh, That's why they can mine it. Wow. You wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this. Um, and it just talks how far it goes. Um, it was named for the round boulders that typify the landscape, a result in sphere, um, to say this wrong, spheroidal weathering and fracturing granite. It is approximately 75 miles north, south, by 75, 25 miles east, west, excuse me. So it's very long, but it's not very wide per se in, in comparison. Okay. It's only about a third wide versus long. Um, wow. And Hond- just hundreds of millions of dollars of copper, silver, gold, zinc, lead, and other metals yep. have been mined from the batholith. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. So it, All because of what it brought up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that's where we go. Uh, crystal. We The crystals we get up here are nothing like what you know, we were getting down in. <clears throat> Ooh, I got one there. Oh, yeah. What we were getting down in, in Arkansas. Yeah, Atlantis. Yep. <laughs> um, but uh, v- very clear, very cool crystals there. So, but yeah, all the Buttes mines, <laughs> it, way too much. It's just, uh, if you've seen pictures of Butte or the pit, you know, you know, they just destroyed that area. Mm. Ah, okay. So, this is, I want to show this. This is the Boulder Bathlet, this tiny little area right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Okay. Yeah, we can yeah, see, we it. see it. Okay. This is the Idaho Bathlet in comparison. So the Boulder Bathlet is a break off of the Idaho Bathlet. 75 million years ago, it broke off, traveled over to here, and this is where it came up because this is where the volcanoes were. Hmm. So bol- Bathletts are basically. Think of low-level magma chambers. And what they do is they can move over, and they don't come up as volcanoes. They come up as plumes. And when they come up, they push all the granite boulders up with them and cover them in magma as they come up. So we get this kind of coating on the granite blocks, which was another one of um, the ideas that Julie had, that it was a uh, polymer, geopolymer. That was coating the rocks, that oh, was holding yeah. them together as right. cement, um, in which we did send a sample of that off to, um, I won't name him, but a forensic geologist who tested it and just said it was weathered granite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ah. Oh, that's not what we want. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you skipped ahead there. You I go. skipped ahead there, didn't I? Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. Technical difficulties. You're the one that's going to have to make the YouTube video out of it. And we're back. I'll fix it. (laughs) (laughs) This just shows a little bit of the bathlith. Um, Again, here's Butte. And Helena sits right about about here. We're just outside of it. Uh, But this is here. So this is the bath. It's hard to find a picture of a bathlith. But if you can kind of picture, these are the boulders that it's basically grabbing and pushing as it goes up and flows out. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, so what is a dolmen? Yep. For everybody who wants to answer that question, here's the definition. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. A dolmen <laughs> is a thing. <laughs> it's a type of single chambered megalithic tomb, usually consisting of two or more vertical megaliths supporting a large, flat, horizontal capstone or table. So just by that definition and nothing else, um, I am finding dolmens. Yep, that's right. You got you got so, side slabs and you got this top slab. Yep, I got two sides. I got a got a <laughs> lintel on top. Yep. yep. Um, you, you know, and here they are gen regarded as tombs, burial chambers. You know, absent clear evidence of this human remains, accompanied by artifacts. These things we're not finding. Right. So by this definition, I'm not finding dolmens. Right, because they yes. The archaeological explanation for most dolmens is that they're megalithic tombs. And so if you're not, right. yeah, but the vast majority of dolmens have, or, yeah, the whatever, vast majority of dolmens do not have remains in them, though. Some of them do, but those could be intrusive. But yeah, you're well, right. Well, and those are the first things to get raided are the big giant rocks that are sticking up out of the landscape when you yeah. live on a flat island like the UK, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> what are you going to raid first? That's right. I don't know. That's what I go after. <laughs> Oop, oh, skip. Darn it. Dang it. Sorry. Don't use that button. <laughs> no kidding. Hey, we can skip though here now. 
Okay. Um, where does the term dolmen come from? It's an, an unclear history, of course. Oxford English Dictionary does not mention dolmen in English, but it gives its first citation uh, for dolmen from a book on Brittany in 1859, the French term used by English authors for a cromlech. So they're just another term for cromlech, okay. stone table, cornice, you know, it's all that. It boils all back down to that. There's even some German etymology. Here's what I was talking about, but what we were talking about before. Okay. So, you know, there are 90,000 established dolmens all over the world uh, from England to South Korea, just like Russ said. Um, you know, here's one, India, just a basic two or a four stone yep. of the lintel. Here's just a two stone with a lintel. That was one of my stone favorite ones. That, were, that second one right this there. This one? The second one. This is, one? Yeah. That one is oh, just yeah, that's absolutely one. astonishing. That gigantic rock on top of those Stone. Two. And the rocks that are holding it up are not very big either. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a crazy one. And I'm not even bringing up the big ones, uh, you know, yeah. Stonehenge and all that kind of stuff, of course. But here's like that chambered style. Yep. You get multiple rocks with multiple lintels. Multiple rocks, multiple lintels. You know, here's France. Um, this is Ireland. This is another giant yeah, one. Yeah, that, that uh, one's enormous. People, as well. people should check that one out. That one's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Germany. That's a chambered one on the sides. So there's a couple different types of dolmens. There are the ones that have just like this, you know, the two rocks and this. Right. Then there's the ones that have the propped boulders up. Let me see if any of these are kind of like that. Kind of like this one, I guess, where it's just boulders propped up another boulder placed on top and some boulders around um so i kind of found that there's a, a very clear difference between propped boulder dolmens um or even prop boulder like this one here in the netherlands versus when we look up here at like south korea or even yeah. india or in france so there is a big difference on those um russia so they're everywhere i mean yeah then the ones these that, are the ones in russia and and Th those are those are the circular with the portal holes, yep. the portal entries. Yeah, those are even even yeah. again a different kind. Well, that's funny because here's Russia, and then you got Korea doing basically the same thing, yeah. just on a square scale. Right. So it's yeah, interesting. Um, but these are all archaeologically dug. You know, um, they're proven man-made yeah. dolmens. Yeah, there's no doubt that an iceberg came across and dumped this rock here. <laughs> yeah, nobody's nobody's did, saying that's what happened. happened. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It didn't happen. But I'm not fine. They, they're finding stuff there that they can use where we're not so far from what we can what we can tell from the surface. Yeah. You have to you know, everything's been surface observation so far. You know, we haven't been able to get into it a little bit more. Um You're saying you haven't which, done any excavations, is that what you're talking about? Right. Yeah. yeah. We haven't been able to do any digging or anything like that. Yeah. So, you know, just in comparison, here's Tizer, one of the most famous dolmens. Um, two standing stones with a lintel on top, definition of a dolmen. Nothing in my, have I ever seen, you know, oops, forgot about that, <laughs> are, um, look like that. Yeah. But at the exact same time, I cannot explain why this got up there right yeah the, the question on that and one is not necessarily the split rock that looks like two standing stones but the the boulder location. that's sitting on top of him yeah it's and it's weird. location okay. it's just on a super steep hill it does have a very narrow slit you know that does have a, a point you know yeah. to compass reading on everything um as far as i can tell it's not an e equinoctial or a solstice marker though um hey, we talked about this too so what we know so far there are literally thousands of them uh we can called temples burial sites food storage acoustic chambers um but they find examples of petroglyphs chisels stone you know shaping blackened ceilings from fires that's something i always really look for um because yeah you know i think it would last yeah. um most are found facing water not all of course uh, some have equinoxal solstice alignments. This is tricky because I don't believe if these are constructed that it did happen before the Younger Dryas Ice Age. 
if these were constructed, it happened before it. Okay, so they're older than than the end of the Ice Age is what you're saying, if they were constructed? It, it's If they were constructed, yeah. My hypothesis is it had to be pre-Ice Age. Okay. So a civilization we are not aware of right now. Right, okay. I'm not saying what. It could have been Clovis. I don't know who was here. It could have been the Neanderthals, but the, all the evidence seems to have been washed away. Yeah. And I don't know if that's by time or by water or by Well, there what, was but... definitely a huge flood at the end of the Ice Age, right? That came, right. went right <laughs> through that area. So, yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I live in a big uh, valley. It's just washed out. You can see on the horizon a uh, big scoop where the water came from the north, mm. where it just blew the mountain out. There's mountains, and it goes, Zoop, and then mountains again. <laughs> wow. So you can just see where they came in and just blew it out. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's take a quick break. Uh, this is good Sounds stuff. Sounds good. And we'll come Analysis. back with, with more. Thanks, man. Sounds good. back ladies and gentlemen brothers of the serpent podcast second hour and we are here with brandon ricks friend of the show uh like i've said many times at the end of the show he is the epitome of value for value he's been making all of our youtube videos and uh but he's been doing this exploration of his area in montana uh looking at these interesting rock formations that we call dolmens that you know, the question is, is are any of them actually constructed or are they all natural? Uh, nevertheless, they're fascinating geologically. And if some of them are constructed, that's really interesting. So let's keep looking through your uh, through your images, Brandon. Yep. I've got uh, four places we're going to look at, four separate locations. Okay. Um, we'll just start with the most famous, of course, Tizer Gardens or Tizer Dolman, excuse me, yeah. which is above Tizer Gardens, which is a botanical garden, uh, which is run by a guy named Richard Croft, who just passed away. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of mine. He actually led Julie Ryder there the first time, uh. showed her. And he took me there the first time because he got really mad at her. <laughs> and the reason he got mad is the tour she was leading was trampling the area around it uh, and killing a very rare herb that only grows in that area. Hmm. So, uh, but he passed away. Very sad. We'll miss him very much. He was a very cranky, cantankerous Montanan. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome. I love, love him. Yeah. So. But um, yeah, let's take a look at Tizer. So you got to share, share the screen, I oh. think. Yeah. I thought it was. Sorry. No, nope, it's all right. Classic Randall there, Carlson there move. Yeah. <laughs> Share the screen, Randall. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn computers. All right. Can you see it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So a little just kind of short. This is the back of Tizer. And we'll see some pictures here. So the front here, of course, uh, you can see the two separate lintels with the division in the middle and or the two cap sorry two standing stones with the lintel on top and this is the back of it and you can kind of see right here this crack here and it's you can tell it's sitting on here this hasn't er eroded from one stone this hasn't this wasn't this base might have been one stone at one point but this wasn't the top and you're saying the top piece was not part the of the lintel that. right the lintel is separate um, it doesn't face the right direction. It doesn't match any of the fracture marks or anything like that up there. Um, so that's very interesting. I cannot for the life of me ex explain how this is sitting up there. This could be one rock that just split. Um, it's very possible, but yeah, the, the lintel by all means, it, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, this man, is the look base. At that. Look at that. Yeah. So <sighs> You can kind of see how the fracturing patterns are similar, right? Coming down. Yes. 
right here. And this is, but this is perfectly vertical. Now look at this one. It comes up. Now I would say this is a natural fracture. I don't know. And why is this rounded down? Did you take a, you take a, uh, like a level to the sides of this thing to see if it's actually, you know, perfectly level. Wow. Yep. <laughs> perfectly vertical that's amazing it's and it's sitting on top of a very steep hill it's hard to tell here very steep hill um at the almost very top of it at the very pinnacle so almost like where bronze age uh, roundhouses used to be built we're not on top of hills but right at the base of them. so i don't know that's very interesting and i have stuck a um i have a um a little camera that I can shove in places like that. And I've shoved it in there as far as I can get it. And as far as I can tell, that is not connected rock. Hmm. So th this is separate. This is not like one piece of rock again, eroding. I don't know if it broke clean. It's hard to say. I mean, the, the, it does look like there's natural fracture lines in the stone, but you know, the, that one that it's sitting on that's, that's below it, uh, it has this horizontal fracture line as well. Right. You know, it's not, I mean, it's not, it's, it's going from side to side, but it's diagonal. Um, but yeah, this, I don't know. It's just really interesting that the, the one above it, that's, you know, these standing stones that the, the fractures are, if those are fractures, they're totally vertical and also plumb. That's really, well, and a lot it of looks people like will a, say that natural fractures don't make 90 degree angle. Yeah. Well, that's not true. No, it's not. It looks like the uh, the lighter colored rock under there. Maybe it's it's just a different type of weathering because it has the exactly. standing stone on top. But it looks different nope. than the rocks around. You're exactly right. Nope, you hit it right on the nose, Kyle. It's the exact same rock weathered differently. Okay. Yep. Yeah, nope, you that's can, exactly you can, right. It's like it's being protected. Yeah. And even over here, this is where the lichen's been growing on it. Over on the left. For some here. reason, we can't see where your there it goes. There, oh. yeah, your mouth. We can see your oh. mouth sometimes, but not all the time. I don't know what's going. Oh, on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all uh, right. Hang on, it's not your problem. Well, <laughs> well I want you guys to be able to see. Yeah, like I can see um, it right there, but you, I you can, can see tell, the when you're pointing at stuff. It's it's just sometimes it doesn't go to where you're pointing. I don't know why. Uh, anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, just different weathering. Perfect yeah. observation, though. Absolutely. This is right behind it. So if you turned around, you'd see these two pyramid shaped stones lined up like this. Um, and it, it makes a very interesting acoustic chamber when you talk in it or you whistle in it or whatever it or call for Sasquatch. <laughs> They're called, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <damn> you um, <laughs> he almost got me eaten. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a very interesting little, but it's right behind it. So it adds to the mystery, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hang on one second. There we go. Now, can you guys see better? Yeah, we can see it. Is that better? Yeah, I can see your mouth. Ah, moving. okay. Yeah. Now this video is just gonna, it's a little shaky. I apologize, but it's going to walk around. If you want to pause, just tell me it's going to go well, all the way around Tizer. So you can see how tight fit that is in there. I yeah. mean, yeah, so you're showing the where the standing the stones base. are sitting on the base. Yeah. Yep, in the front. Yep. And then above, of course, the division. How tall would you say this thing is? Uh, we've measured it. It's 42 feet tall. Wow. The standing stones are. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's a little tricky to get to the top of the lintel. Of course, yeah. <laughs> without dying. So um, I did estimate maybe three, four feet more. Yeah. So let's say 45. So it's tall. Yeah. And look how wide the base is now. Look at the side. Yeah. It's not a perfectly square stone. It's wider at the base and then it tapers up hmm. to where it's holding it. It's almost like a, um, oh, I'm not sure how to describe it, but yeah, it's just wider and then it kind of comes up and then the lintel's up here. Yeah. I imagine if it was the same mass 
like a mm. evenly distributed mass all the way up, it probably wouldn't be standing anymore. Right. Yeah. And now look at all the little rounded boulders all piled up against it. Yeah. See, now you can see the, how it cuts up. Yeah. Look at that angle. Yeah. Okay. I see you're saying it. You can on you the can back end, it there. cuts in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See if I can. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. It cuts in and then it goes straight up. Yep. And so, again, we talk about like prop boulder dolmens, which this would probably go in. I have to look at around the area. What, what else is there? Is there something else placed specific for a reason, you know? Yeah. And that those ear, those acoustic chamber ears, we call them right behind it, gives some credence to it. And there are a lot, there's a lot more in this area than just this one. So, and that's what direction of points, <laughs> in case anybody was curious or can tell me. Wow is better at solstices and equinoxes than I am. <laughs> That's the direction it is well, pointing. I mean, it looks like perfectly divided between the cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. or, you know. Yeah, it does. If it is, it's southwest. Yep. 223 degrees. Wow. 223, and I might be off just a smidge. I mean, this is with my phone. Right. So, <laughs> But yeah, right there. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So the other thing Anyways. to consider is that if they're, you know, if... Uh, Ancient peoples found this natural form. If it was a natural formation and ancient people found it, they probably would have been uh, as amazed by it as modern people oh. are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so it's hard to say, even if you did find petroglyphs in it and a burial or artifacts or something special nearby, that still doesn't, is not definitive as to whether or not it was built by humans yeah. or built by. No intelligence absolutely no correct yeah i mean montana as a whole the area is surrounded by petroglyphs yeah. they're everywhere around right. here they're not in here hmm. so that's why Sasquatch i push doesn't it back have right past the yeah <laughs> 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 not that i can read <laughs> but he liked the joint so um should we tell that story we will. We will okay. tell that story. Yeah. You tell me when. All right. Uh, this is just the hike. I just kind of want to, oops, uh, just the hike up to it. This is another dolmen. This is definitely a prop boulder dolmen um, in the area that I wanted to showcase um, for a couple of reasons. And right there is one yeah, of them. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's so much different than this. Those, have, those are broken, cracked, broken boulders, you know? Yeah. Fractured. They're not rounded at weathered oops oh, we're gonna get a weather that you said weather and then do it that up. <laughs> oh you stupid thing i hate this thing God, i hate <laughs> this says, thing sorry says weather and it's <laughs> like hmm. ah, no <laughs> go away there we go sorry technical dip <laughs> anyways but just a very let me get to it. Just a good shot here. Now, Penny, now the pup needs something. <laughs> I know. God damn it. <laughs> we'll edit this part out. Okay. Just so you can see inside it there. But it's very narrow. It's on an extremely steep slope. I'm showing you how steep it is here. And then it comes up to this fortress looking thing. But it's so skinny. Look how small that is. Yeah. You're not sleeping in there. You're well, not hiding food in there. You might bury a body in there, but the cougars and the animals would come take it in a heartbeat. Yeah. How so, deep is the topsoil? I mean, can you even bury something before you hit stone? No, probably not. Yeah. We're going to find that out too. This is um, below Tizer. This is a, a example of the stacking that we see, uh, um, kind of like the walls that yeah. are built so yeah, these you don't think i kind of think are natural okay yeah so it's gonna ask is natural fracturing yeah, yeah. it is yeah this yeah. is natural and fracturing. this is all granite this is all granite okay. yep yep there's nothing else in the area at all in this for this stuff especially the boulders so this is all yeah just natural stuff here but gives you an idea so this that's cracking, another th this cracking could have been due to like um, maybe this is a this is basically the batholith is an uplift sort of thing, right? Yes, it's the, yeah, it's so a magma it, uplift. 
So here's my man's plane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have the the top of this the the batholith. Let's say when it was a lava chamber. Let's say it has lava or you know whatever. It's it's under a lot of pressure, but the the part that's furthest out is going to be the coolest, right? So it it maybe cools and forms in a somewhat of a layer, and then maybe another layer forms, or as it's being pushed up and it's cooling deeper and deeper into the batholith, batholith not basilisk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not so it makes, overall, it might be curved, but in a small area, it seems like flat lines, like where it maybe has, you know, it's actually crystallized into stone, and then there's a molten part. And then that crystallizes into stone, and then there's a molten part. So you can get these... Get the layers. Sort of the layers. And then later, mm -hmm. when it's exposed and it starts to decompose, like those weak, those joints maybe are the weakest part, and it cracks and makes it look like... Uh, yeah. Horizontal, no, I agree. Horizontal you get these. There. Yeah, because they line up. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, they're this going line goes straight. Yeah. yeah, straight. This would used to be probably one solid piece of rock. Right. But give it 75 million years, it sits on a fault line. So yeah. there's earthquakes. And we so, talked to yeah. Yusuf about this too. Like in the quarries, they had to they had to like cut away all of this, a lot of this exterior rock because it was so decomposed. They couldn't use it? Yeah, I mean, they could use yeah. small blocks of it, but nothing very large because it had fractures and cracks and you know, they had to get down deeper where it was higher quality stone. Higher quality because it mm -hmm. was it was under the pressure of all the other stone on top of it when and it's it, not exposed. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense for anybody to bring bring in these blocks and stack them up like this. Yeah, and make this. I mean, it, it makes no sense. So yeah, this I, is I, I agree. It's natural. natural. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but the point the point of looking at this is to say okay so here's what natural forces can do in this yep. area we get these stacked blocks you know yep. and these interesting patterns uh, yep. so that helps us I want that helps us to look at the more mysterious pieces good because I want you to see those in a kind of a different light versus the natural so it's hard to tell yeah especially on some of it. this one to um, get back. Yeah, it's just natural on all this, but this one's kind of a fun. This is just a freestanding rock, and it just kind of um, th this is kind of that layering thing I think you were talking about there. Yeah, but this one's great. So we we call this the heart rock, of course. Um, and it is sitting in its own little outcropping here. There's nothing else. It's on flat ground. Um, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> And it does have a crack right through it. Um, it's just kind of interesting. I don't think it's man-made or anything. It's, I mean, it's possible, but I don't see any reason for it. And I think this all was one rock anyways, because you can see how that would have just slid right together, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it just looked cool. It does. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's got a nice little slit. You can look through it. Uh, this is the goddess dolmen. Um, this one's very interesting. You can actually drive all the way around this. Um, there's a road right up to it. Very interesting one here, though. Um, it's got a huge scoop mark on this side. It's got a loose stone up here. It does have a very flat, drawn out. You can lay, a couple people can lay down in there. These stones are, I don't, they go way into the ground. So I'm not sure about them. Do but you think they were together? I mean, do you yeah, think they like split, split apart? Yeah, boulder, yeah. I think this is a split boulder, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this might have got pushed up here, maybe by an iceberg or something like that. It doesn't have the um, the lines in it, you know, that the erratics do. But I don't know. It's kind of an interesting one we found. Um by accident. Ah, so what do you see? I see uh, a guy bending down to take a drink out of a large beer. <laughs> wow, <laughs> a pareidolia in effect. <laughs> 
So what, what others have claimed is this is an Olmec warrior. So you've got the head here. Here's the nose, the eye, the mouth, the chin, and that this was built to be an Olmec or some kind okay. of warrior. Uh, yeah, barely. Yeah. Barely, yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. It's a stretch because this all fits together too nice. To, I, I can see it all being one rock. Like that middle rock is his big old earring. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely interesting though. Let's see. I think then. Um, yeah. More of the stacking. Don't tell Scott w Walter, but I found the hook decks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Don't tell him. Okay. <laughs> My treasure. <laughs> and I always like to leave you on a cliffhanger. So wow, there you go. that's crazy. That is amazing. That's what I'm talking about. That just a little push. I mean, it and looks it's like a little push, but I don't a think a little push. And there's a rock right here. So when this goes, it's going to create a dolmen. Yeah, unless it breaks. naturally. Yeah. Unless somebody pushes it or it breaks. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Russ. So I can't believe that's, that's still there. It's you know I've I've seen a lot of these and there there are some here at Enchanted Rock and they look like they're just with the slightest if you just lean up against it it looks like it would fall over but you can't move them they won't. Oh move. no, we tried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you we got, no seriously, four yeah. of us got up there and pushed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're gonna make a noodle. Man. <laughs> Julie it can't have this one. It's ours. Yeah, it's, it's man made. Just... We have proof. But how did the that, how did that get there? Uh, yeah. Why is, that? That why is it break away from Why that? is it That's still there? Like this. you were talking about earthquakes, yeah. like an earthquake yeah. would make that topple. So it can't be there. The, yes. Can't be that, that old. Yeah. I don't know. When was the last time that area felt earthquakes? Who knows? Yeah. And so there's not I like mean, chunks. It's active fault lines in there. There's not like chunks that look like they might've been connected to that standing stone, like up on top there laying around. No, not at all. It's just clean up there. It's clean. <laughs> you can see, you can almost see under it. And so the ice wasn't here to like push that there or drop it there? Oh, no. Well, the ice, I mean, you mean the the younger dryest ice? No. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, I it mean gets, glaciers. It'll, it'll get ice buildup, but it isn't going to be, oh, yeah. the, it isn't going to be the, the southern edge of the glaciers from the Laurentide or whatever. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, water could have pushed it over or something, but we couldn't find a source for the but, rock. Okay, That's so one, one way... It has that, to have a source. One way that this could be not necessarily man-made, but man-altered, is that there were mm -hmm. boulders and stuff they, up they there that they away. cleaned away and just left that, right? That's cool. Yeah, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Didn't finish the job. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> on a cliffhanger that that's way. really so that's that's, really that's the cool. tizer area yeah no it's great it's a fantastic area uh, do you have any questions about that yeah no, i don't <laughs> think so yeah yeah are you still just seeing rocks Russ? uh well when you pointed out you know when you're pointing out olmec stuff i'm like okay i can see the nose i guess but yeah, yeah, I mean, what do you what do you mean? Am I looking Peridolia. for fossils? Oh yeah, no, I don't see. Yeah, it's just yeah. Peridolia. But yeah. I saw Kyle's dude monkey drinking beer, and then yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. the <laughs> saw the Olmec. But it's, <laughs> it's to me, it's obviously like yeah, okay, it's like a cloud that looks like a face. Yep, wow. it's nothing that's so obvious that everybody gets it. Right, everybody has a different perspective. Yeah, but when you see an Olmec, so, an actual carved. Olmec head, nobody doesn't get that. Right. Like, that's a fake. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, if it's up to interpretation, is it man made? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, that's what I mean, there. what I mean is no one looks at a cloud and sees a face in it and thinks somebody made it. Yeah. Well, right. That's, yeah. that's, no that's how it is for me. Like, I can eventually see a face, maybe, or the cat, or whatever it is that somebody's seen in that. But it's, to me, it's like looking at a cloud. It's like, uh, okay, now it's still I can a cloud. See, now I, yes, it's still a cloud. No one carved that, right? It's <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 With rocks, it's a little trickier. <laughs> yeah. And you can have, you can have carvings that are so weathered that, right. You know, they're almost, it's almost invisible to see the carving, but still, it's, uh, so if again it boils down to if these are man-made, they have to be old enough 
to have erased that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is why I like the megalithic slash dolmen kind of deal because a lot of times those people did seem to use raw stone. They weren't, you know, they weren't necessarily smoothing them off or carving them or whatever. You know, like they, it's almost like they would find stone in the, you know, like people build rock walls today and or rock yeah. sta stack rock. You don't, nobody's carving that stuff. You're going and finding the Pick pieces. Pick it up you out need. of your field or whatever. Yeah. Well, you and, find the pieces yeah. you want. You need a flat rock here. You need one that's a little bit more like a cube for this area. You know, and you just go look for them. Yep. So you may not, you don't find any chisel marks on that kind of stuff. Even just the stack rock stuff you see people do at riversides and beaches, right? There's it's just rough. They're not altering it before they're right. That, and I think that some of the megalithic stuff that we see around the world is the same way. They were finding raw stone that kind of was in the sort of the correct shape, you know, and then using that to make the structure. In other yeah. words, it isn't. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's what that's what I'm looking for in this stuff is like, and that's much harder to tell, of course, because we have a like you're showing us. There's an area here where there's lots of natural formations of stacked stuff that you could be like, wow, that looks like a pillar or that looks like a wall, but it's natural. So but then, aren't there some uh, dolmen-like structures like in the northeast or somewhere in the United States where there are huge boulders and then there's like four little tiny oh, things yeah. holding it up? Yeah. Yeah, and they back were back east. You when you interviewed uh, Linda, oh dear, Zimmerman. I've forgotten her name. Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, she had a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, there are also some of them in Canada. Yep. Um, of course, in the Idaho Bathlet, the Sierra Nevadas. Yeah. So these were being made there. Like, yeah, Jim Vieira has pointed well, them out too. He's like, in Europe, this is a treasured ancient yeah. structure. In yeah. the United States, it's like this is it's a glacial erratic, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the ones back east have been ex excavated. And yeah, for most part. Yeah, a little more scientific than what we have so far, at least. Yeah, but I mean, this is an area we we know people live there, and you know, eleven thousand years ago, like you said, and they would use what they had. They're surrounded by rocks and boulders. Yeah. It's a young forest. Um, you know, it's under a hundred years old, according to Joe, which is very interesting. So it's a new growth forest. So this would have been open plain area. It was just lots of rocks. So you use what you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you prop a couple logs up against a rock, you can build a house real fast. And you might modify uh, mm -hmm. certain areas to be markers, like what Russ was pointing out, that somebody could have cleared all the rubble away around that one standing stone that's right on the edge Just as a marker. It. Yeah. So it's like yeah. this is, you know, you could perhaps get lost out there just because there's it's just nothing but boulders and hard to tell where you are and so maybe they made yeah make a landmark like there are yeah. there are oh, things yeah. called uh what are the trail trees yeah. and stuff you know that they well, always see lots purpose. of those where they bend the tree yeah, yeah. like oh, that. you guys have trail trees out there yeah oh lots of them nice. but i mean again, yeah so it's, it's young growth forest yeah. it's but the point of that it's a trail tree yeah the point of that is because you're not actually maintaining a road but you have markers that you can that, that mm -hmm. keep you on the right track as you're traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have old so. logging ones that where they were made, um, the trail trees. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got those down here for sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you just look around, there's just rocks everywhere. And, yeah, you put some branches on top, you know, doorway, you're good to go. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But, but, like I said, that does, it boils it back farther and farther in time, you know, than just after the younger dries, I guess. I, I just, I can't see him being modified after. I don't Why? know. It's tough. Why? Because there's no markings. So? There's no burnt ceilings. There's no chipped rock. There's no, well, anything. Well, I mean, honestly, when we were, you know, the, the rocks. The, the, <laughs> The chamber that we went into in Vermont also didn't have a soot-covered ceiling, as far as I remember. The, didn't it? Didn't, but maybe they never started a fire in there. That's not what it was for. It wasn't really big mm -hmm. enough to be a living space. Maybe maybe you could consider it tent-sized. Like, there was enough room, you know, to for a couple people maybe to lay down in there, but you wouldn't want to live in there, I think. It's pretty small. No. But I think still, ritual. Still, it was Vermont, and it's cold, and you would think somebody <laughs> would build a fire in there, right? But they, I don't remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. That 
using the land as markers yeah is great yeah. or using it as shelter while they're building you know temporary shelters or whatever yeah that's always an idea i like the idea of ritual you know a bit of ritual yeah we put grandpa's bones in there the crows pick it clean we pick it grandpa's bones we carry them around with us that's not unheard of for neolithic times or yeah. neolithic times they carried around grandpa for a long time yeah <laughs> um so there's always that ritual, religious, you know, aspect that it could possibly be. And that leans more my way, I would say, right now. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like that first one you showed us, what, what is it called? Not gardens. Tizer. Tizer Dome. Yeah. Tizer Dome. Like yep. you could see, like, that could be a completely natural formation. And yet it could become an object of ritual just because of how it looks. It just stands out. Yeah. It. it oh, yeah. Right. When you're hiking up to it, I mean, it just appears out of nowhere. You come across this hill and it's just, boom, here's Ty's Dolman. Wow. And it just dominates the landscape. And it's up on the hill and it's huge. And yeah, it's awesome. So if anybody came across that, yeah, they would be blown away. Yeah. Anybody. I don't care. And yeah. they might think how that, old uh, you are. <laughs> you know, the gods built it. Exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. The rock gods, the giants. Yeah. That's right. Hey, yep. if we got giants, they. We're up here too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do one more? Yeah. Well, what do we, or, what do we got? On. We're almost out. Yeah, we're almost we're almost done with this segment. So okay. uh, you want to just uh, we'll we'll take a break now and then we'll do the rest. Whatever you got left on the next segment. Sure. Final segment. We'll go a little, okay. Yeah, go through a little faster for you. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. All right. Back, ladies and gentlemen, the Snake Bros Institute for Advanced Dolmen Studies. Learn everything possible to know about uh, things. Things. Side slabs connected to the front slab. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like Legos. <laughs> and get your official uh, Dolmen School butt flap. That's right. Oh, yes. And yeah, the certificate of ignorance. You can see History Shift has his certificate of ignorance ah. on the back wall there. That's right. That's ah, it. backwards. That's it. Yep. And it is signed by both Russ and Kyle. That's right. But you also it. signed it, right? <laughs> huh? yeah. Okay, good. It's on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not shitting you. It says certificate of ignorance under certificates. <laughs> 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 it starts the best conversations you'll ever imagine. Ah, that's in great, interview. dude. Like, great. what is a certificate of ignorance? Ah. ah yeah. <laughs> well, just tell them. You like, got three hours? Tell them it was issued by the St. <laughs> Rose Institute, and then if yep. they want, they can call us, and I will confirm it. <laughs> tell me how that conversation goes. Like, do you, you know, do you say like, well, I just don't assume that I know everything, so I, I can learn? I mean, how do they end up with a positive response to that how does that work yeah um i i tell them first of all it's brothers of serpents is a podcast of course yeah um where we explore where you guys explore all that stuff and i'm very into it and that kind of thing and then um i tell them the certificate of ignorance is the, the ability to learn yeah i don't know everything i'm not going to know everything about this job but i'm going to learn it there you go. That's awesome. That's fantastic. <laughs> and they love it. That's, that's great. That's dude. great. That's yeah. how I got my job. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Right next to my little archaeological ranging pole back there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. We call that a story pole. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a surveying tool. Yep. Because we're going to start getting a little more in depth here. But All let's right. talk about Amber's compass first. All right. All right. So Amber's compass is not a dolmen. This is a marker waypoint thing that we're talking about before the break, Russ. Um, you got to share screen or? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to get it up here. Give me one second. There we go. Okay. 
Not seen it yet. Yeah, there, well, it, is. there it goes. There we go. Patience, young one. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Now you've seen pictures of this, I assume. <laughs> I have not. You've not? Oh, okay. We're going to get into this one, though. So this is what is known as the compass marker. So it's a fin-shaped ridge of rocks that come up that is broken into two, three sections. And at the very top here is a very distinct pointer. And this is the side. So you can't see the pointer because it's right off of here, but you can see where this rock had fallen down, mm -hmm. or I think it was once up with the other. But this little step stone, that, there it is. Uh -huh. There's the pointer. So that's just sticking out there. And it's really interesting. So it's always grabbed my attention for a couple of reasons. Um, one, the area that it's in. Okay, perfect. So it sits within this natural circle area from Google Earth. You can kind of see it. This is the rock ridge here. So I measured it out just to see what it was. And I'll go one more here and you'll see that it... There we go. So this is a little bit closer. Do you see the oh, line yeah, that I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 And it's sitting in line pointing like at a, something there. Like a sundial so, almost. Like a sundial or something. Yeah. Um, this picture is taken from Julie Ryder. Uh, she claims that this is a solstice marker. Um, she points off the degrees for east, west, the sunrise, the winter solstice is here. She says the summer solstice points in this direction and the sun sets back, of course, over here. Um, well, that, that's, that can't be right. <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah, because, <laughs> I because I, so we we'll point out what, what's wrong because the summer solstice and winter solstice lines are still running due east and west. They're just right. shifted to the north and south Up and which, down. That may be what the, like that's, yeah, but she's she's showing she's like, showing, well, it's twenty three point five degrees. What? But she's in what measurement? Yeah, that's that's not right because they they right, would from there. If you would have a central point, and then you would have to change the angle uh, that you are looking out at. Yeah. The only thing this would change is time. Where the sun rises on the horizon changes over time, right? Comes yep. up at a different spot over time. Yeah, so, so the only thing that this is, could possibly show is a time, but where she gathers this from, I have no idea. My point is that all both the solstice lines are still pointing due east. It yeah, doesn't matter if you each other. It doesn't yeah. matter if you shift north or south. Right? Your position oh, moves to, if your yeah. position moves to the north, you're you're still looking due east. Mm-hmm doesn't matter where you are you're still looking straight line yeah that's what i'm saying yeah yeah okay yeah no i get that so we wanted to disprove or prove this you know um disproven so we went out on the winter solstice <laughs> yeah with as you can see her map lots of compasses we got out there before in the dark tried to line everything up magnetically and with the you know cell phone this is my uh, good friend, Jason Vickers here. Um, again, trying to line up her measurements um, with the horizon. <clears throat> and basically what we came down to is that, yeah, it's bullshit. Um, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even close to where the sun came up. It was way over here when the sun finally came over the horizon. Now where the sun ro rises, I don't know if it's marking or if we're, we're, the sun crests the mountains of where it would mark. Now, it could still be a solstice marker. We just have to dial the clock back. Sun rises here. Sun rises here 5,000 years ago. Rises here 10,000 years ago on the winter solstice. That would only... Years ago on the winter solstice. So you could prove yeah. where it's pointing at by a timeline. No, no, no. Because the solstices and the equinoxes where the sun position is wouldn't change. That doesn't change, yeah. Only the Never. background stars change. The, the sun does not precess. Uh, so you okay. you would only get the sun rising in a different position on By the solstices day. and equinoxes 
if there was a crustal shift. Like, in yeah. other words, if the whole crust oh. of the earth shifted in some way. Yeah, think about yeah, that. It's, it's, Bec- yeah, because the, the, because the sun is like the heel stone, it's the marker you're looking past to see the background stars. Oh, okay. It never shifts due to precession because it's always right there. You're always looking just past it. It's the background so, stars that move, right? So the sun, uh, the sun is not going to move due to that, you know, unless you're unless you okay. take it in in the sense that, like, you could say that the sun is rising in a different spot of the sky. But in terms of what, in terms of geology, or or, mm-hmm. or yeah, it, it's going to be in the same place. In other words, when you sh- when you move back in time. You have to think about the position of the solstice is just that the solstice happens when the earth is in a different place in its orbital yeah. path, mm. path, right? It, okay. Like if, right. you know what I'm saying? Like normally in its orbital path, it's like right at this point, but then you shift 12,000 years, it's going to be 180 degrees around that or- orbital path. That's where the... So it wouldn't be even degrees off left or right. Then. But the but if you were standing and looking at a hilltop and the sun was rising at that hill stop, hilltop every solstice, it would still be rising at that hilltop, but you'd be looking at different, different background stars. stars. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're like you said, the <clears throat> the land itself changed, like the mountains rose or the land sank yeah, yeah, or something yeah. to some, that effect. Some geological the time force took place afterwards that yeah. changed the the environment. Yeah. But, because I mean, it, it, general marker it was close, but it definitely was no right on by any means. So I, I guess we have to disprove that. But the one. other thing now, could it still be a marker for something else? Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. God, yes. So yeah. So like for example, in uh, at Chimney Rock, there is an alignment. It could be a lunar alignment, right? The the Chimney Rock uh, structure there and viewing position is using chimney rock, which is a natural formation. And from a specific position standing away from chimney rock, you can see the moon rise between the two towers of stone on the specific, you know, on the maximum, maximum north rise of the moon. Yeah. Due to this That's really oscillating process of the moon. So they but they also built in the in the structure that they built next to chimney rock one of the walls is aligned to the Crab Nebula, which at their time, they witnessed that supernova. Oh. So. Interesting. You know, there could be any number of I alignments. wonder. They don't have could, to be yeah. solstitial. It could be or, a solar alignment. It could be a, it could be a lunar, lunar alignment. Lunar alignment. Yep. Yeah. We, that's something we should look at. Yeah. Yep. And it I also will. could be, yeah, well. I don't know. And I mean, what what kind of, you know, you were pointing out that the, you know, not, not no pun intended, but you were pointing out the pointer no. on the yeah. end of that rock. Like, have you gone down there to see, like, you know, what kind of, does this work as a sundial? Does it, you know, does it make an interesting shadow move around on the ground during the day? Bring up that, bring up the overhead map again. Yeah. Oop, hang on. Okay. And I'm thinking too, uh, it's possible that her her solstitial lines on there are marking points on the circle yeah. that you would look to. Yeah, so Yeah, she uses these two rocks to line up this. Here. So what what is the Oops, angle? Sorry. What's the, the, the angle the diagonal arrow in the diagram? I don't know. You know, we can find out like that. But anyway, I think um, she's just yeah, trying anyways, to show yeah. that she's just trying to show that that will cross. Maybe the this is the angle, the twenty-three degrees. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because if you're standing at the middle, where the where the cross is, and you're looking towards the part of the circle that the with, that the solstitial lines intersect, then that might actually be, you know, a a, a solstice sunrise. Could be. But it's strange how the diagram is built. Anyway. Um, hmm. so the, so the standing stone, so let's see, you would be having a shadow, your, the, the most prominent aspect of your shadow would be to the north 
of the stones. Let's see. So it's pointing. Yeah, it's basically pointing east west, right? So oh, the the pointer yeah, you, is pointing east west. Basically, yeah. Yeah. So when the sun rises, it's it's um, you wouldn't even see the pointer stone. You would see the pointer at noon. Yeah. Because the sun would be in the southern part of the sky, and the shadow would be cast to the north of the standing stone. Oh yeah. That's interesting uh, concept. I hadn't thought about that. Using it as a sundial. Yeah. So yeah, you know, if you think of the sun dagger, right? This that uh, Chaco Canyon sun dagger, which recently mm -hmm. collapsed, but it was a kind of a natural formation. But the upshot of that was that there was a there was a little split, and the I can't describe the structure perfectly because I I can't remember what it looks like. But it, you basically had to climb up into this area, and you were kind of in a, in a little enclosed cave. But there was a area in the rock where the sunlight could shine through this little crack, and it would hit the back wall. And over the course of the year, that light that was being would shown go. through would move in the analemma, would make the you know the the shape of the figure eight on the back wall if you marked it off. Oh, um, so yeah, but that's obvious design. And I think did they? Well, no, I'm, there, I'm wasn't saying, there a spiral? petroglyph on like a solstice or equinox like the in the in the wall yeah it could the be the dagger i can't remember exactly yeah that's ran right. through it yeah yeah see that's i'd love to find something like but that, that. Is, yeah. what's what's is there do you know uh any explanation of the circle the circular what seems no. like a circular formation just the round it's a raised round that's area like a berm. around yeah. there that, um a really berm cool. yeah. is that farmland very much uh, no, by all means, no. This is um, this is in the Beaverhead National Forest. Okay. Um, so that is it does. Really interesting. Yeah, and, and it looks like the road cuts right through it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, broke it. Yeah, and there's a. It's kind of interesting. There's a little tiny dolmen sitting right here. Mm. I mean, it's just tiny, but and there's even a stepping stone. Okay. Um, that you can see on there that you can actually like right there. You can stand there. And you're basically in line with the structure. Mm. And it's just this perfectly flat square. It doesn't look like it here, but it is a very flat square standing stone. Standing on so, stone. Standing on stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah really it's not cool. standing. This one's standing. <laughs> but I really like this area. I think this area deserves some more attention yeah you know i'd love to see them do some kind of we know there's habitation out of there so i'd yeah. love to see a dig the, the, on the, this site the circular i would yeah area you want to dig the berms yeah that's that where you want to dig like, is out there in those yep. yeah up top i think right here would probably be your best area yeah you know really, this maybe really, follow this line really interesting that's cool yep uh, it's one of the areas yeah that i really want to get more attention on and that's the thing uh, big a good, big thing for me is getting more attention on these sites, mm -hmm. getting more people to look at it, more geologists, more archaeologists, more amateurs just like me, you know, and getting their ideas. And, you yeah. know, I'm going to love to hear what the Discord has to say about all this. <laughs> Get their questions. Right. I mean, and really, if you, you want to know, if you want to join Brandon and go out and look at some of this stuff, he can take you oh. just hop in the Discord and, uh, What's we love to take people out. Or yeah. you can, I guess they can email you, right? They email you at oh, yeah. uh, historyshift yep. at gmail.com. Yep. yep. Historyshift at gmail.com. Yep. Yeah. Or just go to either website. Oh, yeah. Um, so I have to, let me, since we're in here. So that's Amber's compass. Um, uh, let's see. We're just going to go south here. So we kind of went Tizer's most north then amber's compass is in um south of boulder montana so everything here is now south of boulder montana okay. uh, mostly on what's called north white tip road and this place is called giant's playground and this place is where we found fred's house that's fred's first house. of all yeah <laughs> yep we found fred's house <laughs> um oh, hang on. there you guys are okay um but this place is just chalk packed with everything I, mean, I had so many pictures to go through and cut out that it was really tough to <laughs> decide <clears throat> but fred's is my favorite and you can climb straight through there That's which really is great cool. you go straight through there and you climb out and you enter a giant's playground 
Ah. So it's just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Dolmens everywhere. Um, so it's a really cool entrance. Um, but how, we think how tall the, is that? Do you think that's only about 12 feet tall? Still, that's really tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that boulder on top of there doesn't, I mean, it's hard to see in pictures, of course. Oh, yeah, this is enormous. a massive boulder. Yeah. I mean, none of these are small. Right. This is a massive boulder. We think this missing one is actually buried down below here. We have mm -hmm. to dig that out a little bit and measure it and see. Okay. It's so like it got pushed out and then just down the hill. Right. right. What, pushed it, what pushed it out of there? <laughs> Seriously, right? Yeah. This is the evergreen. This is the tallest one. This is over 100 feet tall. Good grief. Um, and it has a little evergreen tree. You, know, you can see that growing out. I love of how there. you've named all these. It's cool. Yep. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, we just come up with bullshit yeah. names, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have a couple of weird ones. Um but this one's fantastic. This side is two huge standing stones. And then this one's, I got a big base block. And then these stacked round ones holding up this side. Yeah. And it looks like that's a clean break. That's not. But that's below it. Yeah. So did the rock go tink, tink? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. And then how did that end up there? <laughs> or yeah, that the the top one looks more weathered than yeah. the bottom one. So it could have been the bottom one could have been buried or that yep. clean break was just later. Yeah, more mm -hmm. recent. More and recent. one thing we've noticed too is directional. So our weather comes very much um from um the west, from uh, Washington. So these are all lined up fairly much east west. Um almost all of them are actually uh follow the same alignment which, which is a geological formation pattern so, yeah yeah so when you find the same alignment of multiple locations it, it's geological you know most likely hmm. why would they align it to match everything else unless they built everything yeah right so anyways um both these are north south, but this is the uh, or east west. Sorry, this is the east facing. It doesn't get as much weather, but it still doesn't explain why that one's more than that. I don't. So I don't know. But that one's a great one because it's just ginormous. That's for scale. That is my nine year old son. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He's way. This one goes way back in there too. Little one in the summer for you. Um, but yeah, this one is just massive. This is what we call the tripod. Dolman. And the reason we do is because it's actually got two lintels balanced on a little tiny thing that isn't bigger than a dinner plate. <laughs> Not kidding. <That's> cool. <laughs> um, and it's just this stack, but it has these two uh, lintels again. Now, yeah, this could have been part of that and tipped over and broke. I don't know. This one is, I put it in the 1%. This is not a dolman, but um, another example of, the, of a lintel sitting on top of yeah, it's a know, balanced two rock. standing stones. Yeah. It's a balanced rock. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Very interesting one. I like this. This is a suspended dolman, we call it. So you've got your basic lintel formation, but then you got this suspended rock here. And we found a couple of these. Um, not entirely sure what to make of that because it didn't break off. We checked under here. It didn't break off of this and fall down didn't break off when well, we're not sure over here, but these are kind of interesting. So we found a couple of these. <clears throat> not sure what to make of those ones. Yeah. My, my first instinct would be to say that that one in the middle there rolled over down and got jammed mm -hmm. into that, into that area in the middle. I don't know, but I don't know if yeah, it's very could, possible. Yeah. If it's a steep slope up behind that picture, it could have rolled down in there and just got stuck. You know, I don't know. Oh, you're saying from behind. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But those are kind of interesting. A lot of this could be flood features too. I just don't know the elevator. You I, said agreed. I mean, they're at 5,000 feet, right? So it's. Yeah. We're high up. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the continental divide. I mean, we're, we're a mile up for the most part. Right. <laughs> Here's another one. So you got this kind of suspended here. Now this one, he maybe broke off of here and fell down. Mm -hmm. Hard to say. 
Um, but another suspended or doorway dolman, you might say on that one. This one, um, very clean, very square, very neat. Um, I don't know. Could have been, this could have come from way up higher, you know, and fallen down. So possible, maybe. Yeah. I don't put it in the 1% by any means. Uh, this is just looking through that one again. So you can kind of see the alignments. It does point to another rock and another dolman. So that's why I included it. This is just a, a ginormous one. This is again, Jason, my buddy, um, standing under, and all four of us got under here just fine and, and could lay down. Wow. So total instant shelter. Um, yeah. And that rock above that is just, I mean, huge. That's cool. You, you yeah, often I'd love to go camping out crushed. there and just like find one of these. Yeah. Just that'd be this. I and gotta, that's what we I got to go check this place out. That's cool. Oh, yeah. You got to come. I'll give you the grand tour. <laughs> That's wow. a nice, this is another prop boulder one. So you got a big giant one on top on the side and you got these kind of prop boulder one. It does you can get under it, this one too. It does seem like these are natural shelters. So there should be, I would say people have used them to camp, you know, I mean, even up into recent Yeah, you times. get caught, you get caught in a snowstorm or something. And yeah. Or even dive just, under there just or something. traveling. You just, you know, you camp for the night, you pick one, pick a yep. roof over your head. Yeah. 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 It's not hard to turn one of these into a full born shelter. Yeah. Uh, this one, <laughs> we call it the in-laws house. It's kind of hard to see from here, but it's actually got three bays here. Um, so we've got, you know, the parents, the kids, and then the in-laws. <laughs> 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 Joe thought that was really funny. <laughs> There you can kind of see it a little better here. But I mean, these you have to climb around, you know, yeah. play in these things. Yeah. To see them fully. I mean, really. It's really hard with pictures. Um, like you said, with video climbing around. This one really caught my attention. Um, I don't know why, but it really bothers me because you've got this like shelf over here, and then you got this like rounded one right here or right next to a square one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like the top's not even touching the round right. one. It's not even, not even it's touching not. the other. There's a gap there. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I mean, this stuff's just I mean, everywhere. And you can see why I had to pick through pictures. Um, so another nice big lintel on top. Use They've landscape. What's wrong with you, man? Use landscape. Yep. <laughs> but see now here again, there's that. Is that a natural? You know, that's probably a natural fracture that where did that come from yeah yeah that i agree with you that the a big question with a lot of these is how do you explain the stone on top right it's, that, that's a big part of yeah. it here's a, just a little one you know they come in all shapes and sizes yep yep they're everywhere i mean but like you said and boulders roll around floods happen yeah ice ages happen um i, I have no doubt in mind that these boulders have been moved by nature over a very long period of time. Okay. This place is in giants playground. It's called the pink fault. I did not name this. Okay. <laughs> um, the claim is with this structure here that there is a picture of Pangea in this. Do you see this slightly darker color in here? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's algae. Right. Oh, you're <laughs> saying that's not a, that's not a map of Lemuria. No, no, it's Dang not. It. But this site is um, where we're going to, we got permission from the Forest Service and we are going to do a dig here this summer. Ah. Because you see this big one here? Yeah. Standing stone. There are 10 of these going back to the left and then there's a 10 foot gap and there's 10 more of them on the backside. Hmm. And so there's this channel that runs in between it and it ends right down here. Um, we're going to scrape out that channel with rakes. We're going to sieve it all. Um, and if we find anything, the agreement is that the state archaeologists will come in. Nice. Uh, past that, we will dig a four by four trench, four foot by four foot uh, trench. Um, document everything. Um, and again, we're going to sieve everything, find anything. It goes to state archaeologist. Wow. That's great, man. Yep. 
Yeah. So we're going to, it's going to be quite the expedition. We're going to try to videotape as much as possible so you've, and you've, put it out there you've for you moved, guys. You've moved way past the air, the point where you were going out there by yourself looking for Sam Squanch, which is what was happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Now we're getting into, now we're, I want to prove it one way or, you know. Yeah. Well, at yeah. least, at least check. That's what you're doing. At least check. Yeah, exactly. Somebody needs to check. Yeah. Cause this is a, this is a really interesting, uh, setup feature. Um, I just love the way that this is called pink granite. It's not, it's just protected. So it doesn't weather as much. Okay. It's yeah. the same stone. But, it just, it's just not weathered like the other stuff is. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what the ranging pole is for. So we can do our measurements. Ah. Yep. And we, I built a backpack sieve. <laughs> you can just put it on your back, you take it, and you put the legs on it, shake it, and do your sieving. Ah. Yep, here's a closer look at Pangea. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> backpack anybody? sieves. Yep, backpack sieves. I've invented it. <laughs> well, they're, they're, in, no, I don't know. Somebody they're widely used them, around sure. here. And they, yeah. it's, there's actually a, there's a really good design made of PVC oh. um, that uh, was being used in some of the digs we were at in South Texas. Um, Another and, good one is the tripod with the yeah, with yeah. It hangs in between. We get the yeah with the chains and yeah. back and forth. That's yeah. too big to pack into here though. Oh, so well, when you what I'm talking about is about this. It's it's two feet by two feet, and then it has a single pot leg and then two handles okay and then you just shake it back and forth okay all right it's gonna be yeah. hard when you do a four <laughs> foot by four foot trench you tell me how that goes yeah <laughs> oh well, we're gonna oh, you'll see it don't worry <laughs> so but no i'm very excited to get in there do some digging and actually do some measurements you know accurate measurements document it measure it everything get it on paper see what it is go from there yeah you know uh these are very common throughout the site uh i think they're just soft spots in the rock that erode um they're not drill cores <laughs> right don't get excited yeah um or if they are the cores are very long gone but they're very interesting and they're in weird places so we also have sonic uh sonic knobs oh my banana chair rock <laughs> I'm gonna bring that home, put it in my living room. <laughs> I used to have one of those banana chairs. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Kids will love it. Here's a banana this chairs are impossible. A, look at the look at the fracturing on this. Yeah. That's just nuts. Yeah, it looks like broken glass. Looks like I mean almost like yeah. Something hit it or something. Yeah, but I love that rocking chair. Or the banana chair. This was an interesting one. It almost looked like somebody had cut bricks out, you know, and took them the top one. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Couldn't find it anywhere. I looked everywhere. So that's another oh, natural yeah, fracturing. That. Yeah. But isn't it crazy? You come across that. Okay. What do you see? I see um, a neanderthal type fish coming up to <laughs> bite uh something <laughs> of one of the aliens from fifth element <laughs> <laughs> russ <laughs> this this is for you no this one was put in for you <laughs> specifically for brett <laughs> Uh, I like Kyle's interpretation, but it <laughs> doesn't look like that at all. I don't know the name of any ancient, you know, big, like, four-headed fish. <laughs> but. Um, right, so that's a... That's a so th <laughs> what okay. the claim is, is petrified dolphins. No. Oh, man. Yes. Petrified what? dolphins. Oh, Flash yeah. petrified dolphins. Where's the watcher when you need him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's got dragons. I got pictures. <laughs> Three-hour show. All right, here we go. Petrified dolphins. All right, now what do you see? Oh, that's really cool. Um, it's uh, it's the hand of a giant reaching up to catch something. Yep. I don't know. Some kind of giant hand. 
what's cool about this he's wearing is a it's mitten. At the entrance <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's at the entrance of um giant's playground ah it's right outside it's a You're pharaoh like, hmm. dancing with a statue i was i was gonna say it doesn't there look like go. a reclining yeah. pharaoh yeah <laughs> oh. it actually looks you like see, that that statue where he's he, he's got his knees up yeah whatever kind yeah the, like the, the hieroglyphs with the knees up yeah yeah a little bit this one it's yeah. kind of a pointier knee yeah but <laughs> yeah let's see you've seen i think you've seen this one hmm this one's interesting let me you guess the, they claim it's a footprint well, no no it looks like hackley granite or something yeah i mean it actually does look like a footprint it does resemble the shape of a um the sole of a shoe it doesn't look like a footprint. Right. right. The pro- yeah. I, that's the but, thing is, is that you can't make a footprint go in granite. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Perfect. Right, of course. Unless it's unless it's a fossil or it's a it's, no, it's you, can't no, be you can make a footprint in granite if it's, it's it was Satan walking <laughs> in lava. If it was molten, right? Yeah. And that's not it gonna, just but, come up. But it won't be and granite. that's not gonna happen <laughs> seventy five no. million years ago. <laughs> no, but it but if it was molten on the surface, it wouldn't be granite. Right. Do you, parado- you see how the pareidolia gets you in these sites? No. You come across this and you're like, Oh my god, it's a footprint. No, I but was saying not. I can I see how that way. happens to people. But, yes, yeah. I, that's why I was saying let me guess. Yeah. People say it's a footprint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No, and yeah. the thing is, it's on a vertical wall. It's not flat. So, oh, well, that, it's a kick print. Unless, but no, unless he's walking up like. <laughs> well, hold on. That's fine. There, there are there are dinosaur footprints in South America oh, that's right. that are on a that are going up a hill. Well, they're practically on they're a vertical wall, and it's running along like it was running. You know, like it was Spider Manning down the wall. But it's Side just case. because it's just because that sedimentary layer has tilted since since then, right? I saw the gravity that. was going it was in a mine, direction. wasn't but it? You, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. Like, you can make footprints in sediment. You can't make it in granite. Uh, so that would be exactly. the first thing for me. It doesn't matter how much it looks like a footprint, and you're not going to find fossils in granite either. No, exactly. So uh, th- this is the kind of common sense you have to use when you're looking at these sites. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can have fun with it. Come on, yeah, man. it looks like a footprint. <laughs> sure, or, dolphins. But. Well, that, that's why we, you know, on one of our earlier epi- uh. one of our early episodes, we talked about uh, the devil's footprints. Yes, that's made on the side of a mountain in what was basically yeah. molten material, pyroclastic flow, and, and a pyroclastic flow. Right when the pyroclastic flow was still really hot. Isn't that over in England? It's in Italy, I think. Italy, okay. yeah. <clears throat> or Spain. Yeah, it shows like the hoofed prints, like yeah. Well, they, they just look like footprints. Oh, does it? Yeah, okay. they're they're yeah, acknowledged prints. Or something. They're acknowledged prints. They're right. They've been acknowledged as a real footprints, and they've been studied. Like some ancient person made these prints. The question is, is how? Hmm. But again, they date a, them. A pyroclastic flow is on the surface. Stilts. <laughs> the, the wood and stilts are slowly burning as you're running that's down the mountain. That's the one guy that survived Pompeii. Stone stilts. <laughs> it's the juggler with the stilts. Yeah. <laughs> running away. This one's pretty famous. And since you just got back from Egypt, Egypt, do you see anything in there? It's a big thumb. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Is he saying it's an ibis? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, but it's... But again, like I said before, it's like saying a cloud looks like an ibis. It's clearly a natural thing. Yeah. Well, was it carved and just worn to that that state? Yeah. Does that ever happen in Egypt or something where it wears down to that state? That's a cartoon dinosaur who's rearing back in fear. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? <laughs> <laughs> He's going like, you steal my smoke. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm just trying to come up with like crazy ones. <laughs> so this is a, this is another another Olmec head. See his hat. He's got his hat. This is his helmet, right? Okay. Here's his earrings. Here's his face. No, I don't know. I'm not buying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
it's very funny because you come across this and as you walk around it you see it and you t- keep walking and it disappears it disappears yeah of course yep yeah it disappears when yep. we were driving through uh what was it um was it the garden of the what was it called valley of the gods. valley of the gods that was happening nonstop. As you drove through, there would be uh, these huge formations. And I mean, we're talking about these are enormous formations way up on these ridge lines. So they're probably, I mean, who knows how hundreds of feet tall. And you're looking up, and you're like, wow, that looks like an Easter Island head. And then as you kept driving, <laughs> it ch- changes into something else. <laughs> and then you keep driving and go around a little bit more, and then it turns into something else. And it just, you know, and now now it's a bird, and then it looks like a dolphin, and then... You know, now it looks like a shark, and then it's an Easter Island head, and it just, you know, it's all the same stone. So it's just, it just keeps going. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah. So kind of suss out the, and I think the farther the away, again, the farther fun. away you are, the, the uh, more it works. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And if you take off your glasses, yes. <laughs> and squint, it helps. And squint. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Anyways, Smoke this is for Brett. <laughs> That's my this f- is for Brett. Okay. That's a guy in his favorite granite sleeping bag. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a robotic watcher. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Ew. I see. I see. He's watching. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's got. A, he's watching up there. Yep. Robo watcher. Yep. He. He's the guardian of Giants Pager. Okay. <laughs> That's for Brett. So there did, is a did, watcher. So did that this is did that lady take people around and point these out and say this kind of stuff? Or are you just Oh yes, no, exactly. Oh I'm telling God. you word for word what she would tell them. Oh wow. Yep. That the like the robotic watcher, the Ivis, those are exactly what she would say. <sighs> but she would say that the giants and the aliens and the Atlantis. built them and yeah. yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what's going to happen to Brett in a few years. <laughs> and of course, I got to leave you with a piece of shit. <laughs> Remember it, the black mask? Yeah, you decided it was, is it, was it a piece of crap? <laughs> well, we've sent it to so many universities. It is made of carbon and oxygen. And that is it. Uh, it is hard as a rock, won't melt, won't burn, doesn't dissolve in water, doesn't have a smell, contains rocks and pine needles. And Carol called it here and um the new jersey university of geology cannot figure out what it is wow mystery mystery we think it's pack rat shit <laughs> it looks like slag to me i don't ex, you know except, almost except for the but stuff it's not that's... magnetic but it's not magnetic slag would be magnetic hmm. if it had enough iron in it still right well it depends a lot of times the slag is the it's the impurities. Right. The bloom that comes out. Right. Before the iron. Wow. Anyway, so carbon yeah. Carbon and oxygen only. Only carbon and oxygen. That was the that was the um the detailed analysis it's solidified we got. It was a, um, CO2. There you go. The <laughs> biggest theory right now is a um chondrite. Yeah. From a lightning strike. Yep. Yeah, chondrite makes sense. Yep. But there's no burning around the area or anything. And yeah, I mean, unless well, it, it may melted be, it, an it may entire be, tree, it may be an old chondrite that washed out. It could be, yeah. That's it's very really interesting. Wow. Yeah, I remember when you were posting pictures about this of this thing. Yeah, I, I still have a huge chunk in my garage. <laughs> That's great, man. It's always good to have a mystery rock laying around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's Giant's Playground. There's I mean, so much an, more to unless see. Unless it's actually course, an but... alien egg that's going to hatch in your garage and conquer the world. <laughs> it's totally it might. Possible. Yeah, it is possible. I'm waiting. It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Giant's Playground, definitely a place you'll have to come see for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. One more. Well, we're almost at, we're about out of time here. But yeah, if you want to keep oh. going, go for it. We, we, oh. we still All got right. 15 minutes at least. So keep okay. going. We'll yeah. do it quick. Okay. All right. You want to take a break and then come back and do it? No, I just uh, we have yeah we have to do an intro we, too. So yeah, oh, I, it's fine. No, we can take a break if you want. No, it's whatever. We're good. Oh, all right. Hang on. So, um, do you guys remember Sage Wall? Me talking about Sage Wall. Oop. Hmm. That's okay. First off, though, these are my hiking buddies. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd suss them out a little bit and 
dox them. This is uh, <laughs> Sup, Russ first. Yep, this is Russ. Uh, the next one here is Jason. You've seen him. I call him my uh, hyphen. My hiking wife keeps me alive. <laughs> He's my hyphen. Jason Vickers. He's going to kill me now. <laughs> we go hiking a lot. He's a really good guy. Um, and he has kept me alive a couple times. <laughs> and this is Doyle in the back here. He's a funny guy. He cracks me up. So we all went down to Sage Wall. Sage Wall is um, below Butte. Uh, right next to Butte, actually, in the Pipestone area, uh, which is just filled with boulders. I mean, it's sick how <laughs> how many there are. It, it, this is private property. You have to pay to go here. So I hate it already. <laughs> you have to pay $25. Um, so we paid 100 bucks to come see you. They've laid out nice trails. They say, don't go off the trail. This is me going way off the trail. <laughs> I'm about now publishing it. <laughs> yeah. no? Yep. Yeah, it's good. It's grum. Um, I paid for it. Um, and this is just Sage Wall coming through the background here. You're going to start seeing it. This could stand out in Saxe Wimon. I mean, this is just yeah, a very amazing. interesting layered. And this, what well, you were talking about, Kyle, coming out in layers yeah you know there's almost one two three four layers this is the most eroded so it's the most broken up but it's very straight it runs a very long distance <sighs> why it would be here how thick is me. it how thick is it uh about three and a half feet wow but back here it gets to about four and a half so it does bulge out a little bit as it comes back um we see ridge lines like this but and never this clean uh as this one was and, and maybe because like they cleaned up the wall area. yeah right exactly we were all pretty blown away by it i mean it's it's up there i mean it's i don't want to call it um polygonal masonry by any means but some of it kind of is or it cracked and fractured that way you know what i mean um right here where we're looking there's jason for perspective of how tall it is oh yeah about about three you know jason's worth <laughs> or at least you know two and a half but look how those fit together or they're cracked and then there's a big break here I don't know if they pulled that rock out or not. Again, you can see that big break in the wall. But yeah, it's just perfectly laid out, perfectly straight. Uh, this one does run north-south. So it's a little different. But this is a, at the very southern end of the Boulder Batholith. So we're getting kind of out of it at this point. Um, so is that part to the left there still look like it's... So if it was a natural feature, the part to the left is part of it but just like still buried or yeah, that would down. be, that would be the idea you're talking about. Like right yeah, there. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's still like a protrusion of the same kind of stone sticking out. It's just not as pristine as this stuff over here. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. It's just still buried. It hasn't been cleaned. All this undergrowth hasn't been, you know, breaked away. But, you know, it was very interesting to look at. That's for sure. I mean, yeah, for sure. I still don't have a solid explanation for it. I mean, I would say it's natural. Um, I would say it maybe have been modified, though. Like maybe these top holders were placed to add it to make it higher. But yeah. again, big question. Why? Ah. You know? Ah, whoa, sorry. I'm a terrible cameraman if you can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I just found this nice little V rock here. Shoot in landscape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say everything is vertical. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You're shooting pictures of landscapes. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Oh, I'm a landscape photographer. That's all I am. Thanks, Russ. <laughs> and you're <laughs> not using it. landscape mode, which is what and I'm saying. I'm not letting get... <laughs> Well, I can't. I've tried it. <laughs> what do you mean you can't? When you put it, no, when you put it into Adobe, it only gives you the section. Oh, you're doing it wrong. You're yeah. doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't use Adobe. Here's no, a I great mean, way to look. No, I mean when you're holding the phone, you turn it yes. sideways. Oh, right. <laughs> That's what I mean. Oh, okay. So I don't get the. Actually, I do most of the time, honestly. Well, all of but these again, all of these cutting. Photos you're and, missing. You're missing this much of it. <laughs> yeah, because you're holding yeah. the phone vertical instead of turning it sideways. No, I'm saying this picture here, I blew it up in Adobe. Okay. And you're not seeing this much of the picture. All right. Because I wanted to zoom in on the wall. Does that make sense? Okay, so you cut out the, no, the it landscape. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Gotcha. I, yeah, basically. Yes. Nope. Nice little... <laughs> I don't think that's what's happening, but it's fine. (laughs) What? I'll stop complaining. (laughs) You making fun of my videos? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That is a beautiful feature. I can tell you if I was hiking through the woods and I came up on that, I'd be like, holy crap, this is a wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it would, I would have to walk around it for a long time to, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, yeah, okay, it could be. It could be constructed or it could be natural. My inclination is to say, let's let's assume it's natural and then see if we can figure out if it was actually constructed. But I like that. That's thinking. really. That's how I think. Really compelling there. It is. Yeah. Like I said, it would. I, I, I could see this wall in Peru. Yeah, it's Almost. a little it's a little more rough. Yeah, I know. It's a, yeah. well, yeah, but yeah. I'm. The similarities were enough that it jumped out at me. I mean, yeah, it's just like holy crap. Uh, you know, this was um, this is interesting actually. We found this rock as we we're coming out. You should drill a bunch of cores in the in the Do various the rocks testing. and then send them off to Scott Walter. <laughs> Do the magnetic testing. Yeah. That was a neat little round one just sitting on a little pillar there. Yeah. Should we bring up the Texas wall? (laughs) Well, he already did that with the Texas wall. Yeah. Yeah, he already disproved that. So we're good. (laughs) We don't have to talk about it anymore. It's done. (laughs) So this rock was very interesting, though. And I want to point this out because remember Tizer for a second. You got two standing stones with a lintel on top, right? Yeah. Now look at this. Give this, what, 20 million more years to erode? Or an and earthquake? Could this turn into a Tizer or an earthquake? Could this turn into another Tizer? Maybe. Is this a pre-Tizer? Could be. That's what I look at it as. Yeah. Maybe this is how Tizer formed. Because this looks different up here. And if it broke, these are separate. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I Absolutely. see that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, it's pre Tizer. This is the one um, that Randall really liked. I showed this to Randall Carlson when we were down in um, Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. Jesus. Um, Arkansas. Arkland- uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that Randall liked. He was very interested by this because it's balanced very cleanly. It's got a nice clean opening. Uh, a rock on top that didn't come from either source, you know, obviously that I could, that I could see, but a very neat little, dol- neat little dolmen. Yeah, that's a cool one. Very clean. Very nice. That's, you know, by definition, that's a dolmen. This one's fantastic. Wow. So this one's actually big enough. You can drive under it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's, a blast. That's amazing. Is that on the side you of just, the road there? No, this is back in what they call a o- OHV area. It's where you can take four wheelers oh, and okay, side by cool. sides, the motorbikes and that kind of stuff. And you can take your car up in there in the summer or well, not your car, but your four by four um, and go park and camp and stuff. But this is so, so 
amazing to go under this. It's just so big. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just wait for that to crush. Nobody made this. <clears throat> <laughs> if they did, they were huge. But there is actually pretty fracture marks on that. There's a there's that one again. Oh, that one snuck back in there on me. So all right. That's the end of Sage Wall. So Sage Wall is, like I said, in the pipe zone area at the very end of it. Um, if we look real quick, I know we're running out of time, but if we look real quick here at Tizer, just want to kind of show you guys on Google Earth here the kind of area that I'm looking at. So Helena, where I live, it's right up here. Um, here's Wolf Creek. Here's Helena. Here's Boulder. Here's where all the Bathala starts. And here's where all the Dolman locations are all the way down to Butte. So here, this is the size of the area that we are exploring. Hmm. And you can see we've pretty much followed the road at this point. You know, we're not too far off the road. Um. So we have a lot left to go look at, you know, there's tons of area here that we need to go explore um, that just hasn't been looked at. And it's Google Earth. So deceiving, you can zoom in, find a patch of rocks. I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go check that. Oh, I want to check out this area right here. You know, mark that, go out, hike it, check it out, go back. But that's just what an area. That's one trip. Yeah. One day, you know, so we have lots left to go. <laughs> That's a great hobby. Miles and miles. <laughs> it's it a is. fantastic <laughs> hobby. Yeah. It is. A, yes. Do you have YouTube. service out there mostly? Um, sometimes. Um, yeah. but... I used to download, I used to download the high resolution maps for the areas we'd be, the remote areas. Yep. Because while I was out there, I could, mm. I could figure okay. out like, am I near this spot that I want to check out that I can see on the map, you know? Yeah, That's we use helpful. the that Hunnix app a lot just because it shows private and public boundaries. Mm, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeps us from getting onto land where we shouldn't be. Right. In Texas, that's, We're very respectful that's usually of a fence, that. you know. There's yeah, usually a fence. not up here. Right, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a bunch of barbed wire somebody just laid down. Ah. Most of the time it's nothing. It's just boundaries. So right. unless you've got a GPS, you can wander onto public land easy. And that I try not to do that. On to private. I try land. to stay on yeah. Yeah. I try to stay on private. <laughs> try to stay on public oh, land. Public. <laughs> yeah. He tries to trespass <laughs> all the time. I do try. <laughs> I sneak. There's some uh, and yeah. No, there's plenty to explore on public land. I don't need to be bugging people. <laughs> right. Not yet. <laughs> you know, that's right. Not yet. Not to like improve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well thanks, man. Stuff, yeah, man. that was, that was, yeah, that was very entertaining. So really it makes me want to come up oh, there thanks. and uh, do some trekking with you. Yeah, do some hiking. Cool. Well, you're coming up to Missoula. That's an hour away from me. Yep. Yeah, we'll be busy there, though. I know, I know. Pretty, pretty busy. <laughs> I'll steal you for a day. Well, tell me, tell people where they can find your your work there. Oh, thank you. Yep, uh, we got two uh, websites, or I have two websites. <laughs> There's history shift uh, blogspot .com, of course, um, and the new one, Ancient Montana, uh, is up. So I'm still working on that, but it is up and running. All right. And if anybody wants to reach me, history shift .com, I am Twitter. I'm now history shift underscore or history underscore shift because somebody hacked me. So oh. I have a new account. <laughs> okay. And you're also on the discord. Oh yes. So definitely. Find you there as well. Uh, yeah. Hello discord. So history shift at gmail.com. Yep. All right. Cool. Yeah. I'll send you maps. Ancient whatever Montana. You need. That's a great, that's a great website name. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Uh, thanks so much for all of thanks. your uh, value for value contributions to the podcast, man. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for letting me be part of it. And thanks for boosting the history shift, Nate. You, yeah. you don't know how much you've done. Wow. Thank you. That's cool. Yeah. you really done well, a lot. You deserve it. Man. I mean, yeah, you, def you definitely deserve it. You've earned it. And you've earned it for sure. I will send more one up boxes, I promise. <laughs> I know they've stopped. They will come. That's all right. It's all good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, All thanks. Right. Thanks. I would, you know, normally I'd say thanks to History Shift for making this YouTube video, but yeah. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for making this video. If people are watching this on, yes. on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I hope all, so. All the ones in the future. And uh, thanks to all you listeners out there. We love you guys. Always have. Always will. Good night, Adamu. Get back to work. Hey. Snakes. <laughs> Snakes. <laughs> Snakes. <laughs> Snakes.